tied Rogers Center as the Red Sox despite the way things have been going for them lately they seem pretty chipper right now in their first base dugout Tom Goodwin along with Jackie Bradley Jr. Boston though lost last night to the Blue Jays they've lost four in a row overall they're nine out of a playoff spot with 17 to go so it would take a miracle and then some for them to make the postseason Xander Bogarts though a little bit under the radar perhaps has had one of the best seasons of any shortstop in baseball and he has been a real problem for the Blue Jays this year to the tune of a 979 OPS in 16 games. Yeah, he has been a terrific hitter for them and great shortstop as well. Wilmer Font will serve as the opener for the 11th time this season. The Blue Jays are 6-4 in his previous 10 starts as the opener. He personally has an 0-2 record with a 245. He's actually pitched pretty well as the opener. I think he's really freed up. He can use his good fastball. He's got a very good breaking ball and a wicked split finger pitch. So he's done a nice job in this opener role. A little bit surprising they used it with Trent Thornton. We'll talk about that more as the game goes on. In the outfield, Oscar Hernandez in left, Jonathan Davis in center, Randall Gritchick. We've highlighted Brandon Drury tonight because he's made starts at six different positions and has committed just four errors in 108 games. And that's really challenging. We talk about guys being versatile, but to be able to play that well at six different positions, Brandon Drury's done a nice job moving all over the diamond this year. This being September, of course, a lot of bodies in the clubhouse and managers for every team, but specifically Charlie Montoya in the case of the Blue is trying to get people in and juggle that roster as best he can. Brock Holt is in the lineup for the Red Sox tonight, and he's about as versatile as Brandon Drury is. He's in right field tonight as he leads off and pops the first pitch up at a very shallow left center. Bichette, the shortstop, will give way to the left fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar making his first start in left field since back in May when he was sent down to the minors. He appeared in left field for an inning or two last night. But with Jonathan Davis being a, a very good defensive center fielder, if Davis is in the lineup and Hernandez is in the lineup the rest of the way, Teoscar will be in left. Yeah, the Blue Jays want to see what they have in Jonathan Davis, and he is by far the best defensive center fielder, and they want to see if he might be able to compete for that job on a regular basis next season. Here's Andrew Bogarts, and a fastball from Font pumped in for his strike. Bogart's having a magnificent season. He's got 31 homers. He's got 49 doubles. If he hits a double tonight, or if he hits a double at any point the rest of the season, and if Rafael Devers hits a home run at any point the rest of the season, the Red Sox will have two players, each of whom will have 30 or more homers and 50 or more doubles. No team ever has had two guys with those numbers in the same season. Yeah it's been a terrific season for both Bogarts and Devers and if he does it as a shortstop he'll match Alex Rodriguez is the only shortstop to have 50 doubles and 30 home runs in the season. a -Rod did it in 96 when he's with the Mariners. The 0 2. This one grounded down to third scooped up by Guerrero and in time two down. Well, we highlighted the defense in the open and how well they played last night. Lottie Guerrero took extra bases away from Mookie Metz with a terrific play. Bichette made a couple of good plays. Gavin Biggio made a couple of good plays. They played well in the field last night and they're hopeful of doing that again. They want to finish up strong. They'll go into the shift now. You see Bichette moving over to the right side of second base. Biggio backing up at a shallow right. And that's because Rafael Devers is up. 314, 29 homers. Second in the American League in RBIs with 107 leads the majors in extra base hits with 83 and he swings at the first pitch. This one is dropping and will be in there for a base hit there handed by Hernandez and back into the infield to hold him to a single His 183rd hit of the season. He's just had a terrific season and Devers just 22 years old. He plays with a lot of joy. It's that two seam fastball and you can see it runs right out over the plate. Hits it off the end of the bat but he dumps it in front of the left fielder to ask who has to give ground and make sure it doesn't bounce over his head. So it's a two out single for Devers and he's aboard. Which will bring up J.D. Martinez. You notice the absence of Mookie Betts at the top of the lineup for the Red Sox tonight. Betts is getting a night off from Alex Cora. Martinez DHing and in the cleanup spot one for four with an RBI double last night. And another guy with the big numbers the the Red Sox might have three different players this year hit 300 with 30 homers and drive in 100 runs. 
and none of them is named Mookie Betts. J.D. Martinez, Xander Bogarts, and Rafael Devers, and that's not to take away from the fact that Betts has had another very good season. These Red Sox, they can swing the bats, but the pitching is, the starting pitching specifically, just hasn't been good enough to get them into contention. No, and that's what it takes to win, and they had a great starting pitching staff last year, not the case this year because of multiple injuries. It started with Vivaldi early in April, and then Price had his problem, sales out for the season. That what Rodriguez has had a good year. He's got 17 wins. Fastball fouled back, and it's two and one. You know the Red Sox also have four hitters with 28 or more home runs. They've never had four hitters with 30 home runs in a season. They've had teams with as many as three with 30 or more. 2016 and 1977. But never have they had four. 30 home run hitters in a single season. In the air down the right field line Grichik's got room and it makes the catch to retire the side just nine pitches needed by font to get three outs here in the top of the first sale winds he fires swing and a miss strike three it's over the Red Sox have won the world championship they win the world series four games to one can you believe it. Cespedes decide the move. He's not going to get it. And it rolls off the side wall. And they're going to wave home Kendrick. The throw to the plate is there. Oh my and goodness. they got it. Are you kidding me? Wow. Here's the pinch. Swing and a hard hit ball. Inside third. Base hit. Down the left field line. Mazzara gets the third. Adrian going to second. He's got a double for 3,000. Now a 3-1 for Acuna. Swinging a high fly ball. Deep to left field. Way, way back. It's gone. The grandest of all home runs. Two home runs tonight. I'd like to see a hat trick. I don't know about you. Goldschmidt. High drive. Out to left. You bet he's done it. Three home runs. At Rogers Center and Bo Bichette in the leadoff spot as always for the Blue Jays tonight. It'll be Bichette, Vigio, and Guerrero. One, two, three in Charlie Montoyo's lineup as it has been so often the last couple of months. And Vladimir Guerrero, a little bit overshadowed by Bichette, at least statistically, since Bo came up to the majors, but somewhat quietly, Buck, although he's not been hitting home runs recently. He has been productive, hitting for an average, a good OPS, and he's going to wind up with some pretty good numbers at the end of his rookie season. Yeah, he sure is. When you look at his last 36 games, you mentioned 319 average, and they're going to get a look at Bobby Pointer, who is making his first major league start. Pointer has worked out of the bullpen. He's appeared in 25 games over his major league career, all in relief and all with the Red Sox between last year and this year. So he will open this game tonight. You can see this is just his sixth game of the season. A couple of Floridians here in this at bat right now Bobby Pointer from West Palm Beach attended the University of Florida he's a Gator and Bo Bichette is from Orlando. I nice spoke today about and we talked about it last night rookies playing into September a longer season than they're used to because the minor league season ends on Labor Day and Bo said. Yeah but he's been fortunate teams that he's been on have always been in the postseason in the minors and, and we forget that sometimes that this group of players has come up very successful through the minor league system so he's used to playing well into September. Well Look another out. reason why he might not be affected because he broke his hand and he missed a significant time he was up for about seven weeks and of course and that allowed him to get a little bit of a break. John Schneider a coach for the Blue Jays the manager of that team that won a championship at double A last year. One of all two strikes on Bouchette. You know everybody watches Bo swing the bat and he's got such a violent swing everybody says boy he swings too hard but that's his swing and it's really under control. It's not that dissimilar from that of Jose Bautista's. 
and he's got a very good approach. He's got a particularly good approach with two strikes. His front foot never comes off the dirt. When he gets two strikes, he just pushes back to get a little rock going in his stance. Well, some people used to say that a guy like Dustin Pedroia swung too hard, and then when he won an MVP, that kind of quieted down a little bit because that, that's just the way that, that he'd always done it, and he'd have been successful doing it that way, and you can say the same for Bichette. Uh, he's got a ways to go before he catches up to Dustin Pedroia, but he's certainly off to a good start to his young career. He has seen a steady diet of fastballs, keeps fouling him straight back. Check the swing and a ball up and away. They appeal, but he didn't go, and it's two and two. Yeah, when you face the Boston Red Sox as a young player, there's a chance you're going to face their pitchers in the minor leagues because they both play in the same league. Boston's AAA team is in Pawtucket. Of course, Buffalo is a AAA team for the Blue Jays, and they play a lot against each other, so a lot of these younger players have faced each other coming up through the minors. Foul to back and it'll wind up below us behind the plate. I would imagine that in Bichette's case and probably Guerrero's case as well. They probably moved up the ladder quicker than some of the older guys. So they started later and moved past some guys on their way to the major leagues. You know, some guys take longer than others to get to the big leagues and Vladdy's in the big leagues at 20 Boge's 21. Little flare into shallow right and back goes Marco Hernandez one down. Well let's take a look at the Red Sox defensively. Xander Bogarts is back at shortstop. He did not play in the game last night. We're going to highlight him because he's played the third most innings in the majors at shortstop this season. Marcus Simeon leads the way. Nick Ahmed of the Diamondbacks is second and Xander Bogarts has played twelve hundred and thirty six in the third innings at shortstop and the interesting thing is Simeon has committed just eleven errors Ahmed and Bogarts both committing just ten errors and Bogarts is a perfect example of a great two way player offensively and defensively. Yeah he's got to be among the most underrated stars in baseball which is kind of funny when you play in Boston you don't think that can happen but overshadowed a little bit by maybe some of the bigger names on his team. Here's Kevin Biggio had a good night last night hit a home run walked a couple of times. Biggio 208 13 home runs now on the season. And he has walked 61 times in 84 games. Only seven other players in a major league history have walked 61 times in their first 84 games in the big leagues and as we talked about last night he'd love to get a few more hits but he is still taking his walks on base percentage is good he's on base a lot and the Blue Jays need all of that that they can get close take there and it's ball one and among players just in baseball this year only one player has walked more frequently than Kevin Biggio and that's Mike Trout and if you take Trout's intentional walks out of it biggio has got the highest walk percentage in the majors this year. And because Trout doesn't have a whole lot of protection around him, he's going to get a lot of intentional walks. Down the left field line, will there be a play? There will not. I think the more Mizio plays in the big leagues, the more bats he gets under his belt, he's going to understand there's a time to be aggressive and there's a time to take more pitches. I think more than anything, I commend him for his patience and sticking to his game plan. There was a time when he was been called out on strikes almost game after game on pitches that he knew were outside but he wasn't going to deviate from that. And I think he's going to keep that great approach and plate discipline but at the same time he's going to learn when to be more aggressive early in the count. One two and up and away to even it up at two balls two strikes. Playing Bishio pretty much straight up. Boy, that's as straight as as you will see in this day and age. I mean, he's straight up on the infield, straight up in the outfield. I mean, that looks so foreign now. Yeah. Sometimes with a lefty on the mound, so the ball moves away from Bishio. So they'll they'll sometimes they'll play guys differently against a lefty than they do against a righty. Tampa Bay used four outfielders against him yeah. in the series down in St. Pete. And it was interesting that the Red Sox have decided to play him straight away. Obviously Bobby Pointer doesn't have much experience against this Blue Jays team so Alex Cora decides to play it more straight away. Again the 2 2. 
And another pitch popped up. This one looks like it'll be playable. Devers in a foul territory is there, and that's out number two. What do you think, if you'd been you today, how would they have defended you? Would they have had three on the left side? Think they'd have had three infielders on the oh, left side? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I went up there, especially when I came to Toronto. All I was trying to do is hit the ball out of the ballpark down the left field line. Yeah. George Bell got so tired of getting up when I hit foul balls at Exhibition Stadium. He said, I'm not getting up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they all go foul. <laughs> Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. 273 15 home runs no score here in the bottom of the first. And it looked like a change up there you could see Vladdy reaching for it and the ball just never quite got there. Blue Jays had photo day before the game today three or four. Rows of seats and benches and all the players were out there and we showed you the shot of Guerrero and Bichette and Biggio together. We were watching them on a monitor in our truck during our meeting before and it was at one point and I don't know if they're Thornton's or Jansen's but at one point you looked out there and Guerrero had the white the goggles on the white glasses on just before they were getting ready to, to take the picture. There is a little bit of a I mean they're young. And they act young sometimes there. That's a bunch of kids on this team right now. Yeah. And you know what you can't take that away from them. They're having a good time and especially with Guerrero Bichette and Michio they they respect the game when it's time to be serious they go to work and they do a good job with that but they're 20 21 and 24. Change up again two and two a couple of swings and misses on the change up and here it is before the game there's Vlad I think they're Thornton's. Got his bill turned up as well, <laughs> having a good time taking a <laughs> team photo. That was at about 3.30 this afternoon. 2-2 two -two on the way. And a fastball up high. The count is full. You know, I mentioned that Pointer probably pitched a lot against the Blue Jays. He actually pitched six different times against Buffalo this season, all in relief. So they have seen him, and he started. He had two outings in April against the Bison, so a lot of these kids saw him down there. Foul to back. All three batters in this inning have gotten to deep counts, have fouled off pitches. We'll see if they can do any damage. The first two made outs, but 21 pitches already thrown by Pointer. And again the 3 2 jam shot shallow right field and who's got it I think Marco Hernandez has it what a great play by the second baseman with his back to the infield taking away a base hit from Vladimir Guerrero Junior. Boy they don't come much tougher than this for a second baseman concentration keeping his eye on the ball making a terrific catch. And he swings and drives one left center field deep. Hernandez back at the wall. Goodbye. Home run, Steve Pierce. High fly ball in the left. Back at the wall. He's got another. How about Steve Pierce? Oxy flies one in the air to left center. Back at the wall. And it's gone. It's over. A walk off home run. Seattle Mariners, Felix Hernandez, the 2-2. He got him! It's finally happened! A perfect game by a Seattle Mariner! It was done by the King! Well, that is 50 cents. Curtis Jackson? Curtis Jackson. And his first pitch was not great. Just a bit outside. That was Curtis Jackson. I don't even like when he comes around here. You know, I don't even want him around here. 50 cent is the best. Back to Rogers Center. Red Sox starter Rick Porcello was in middle school in New Jersey, about an hour's drive from Manhattan, when a classmate late for school on September 11, 2001, broke the news of the terrorist attacks to him and the rest of his classmates. 
Parcello told me, we were so young back then, we really couldn't process what was happening. He didn't fully understand the scope of the tragedy until he arrived home that day and found his mother crying in the kitchen. In the days following 9-11, Parcello discovered some of the students from his school lost loved ones in the attack. Looking back at it now, he told me it's almost 20 years later, the memories are still so fresh in his mind. Dan. Absolutely, Hazel. We were talking about it before the game. It's just that one day of the year, and there are others, of course, but it is one of the days of the year where you just can't help but have the conversation and say, what do you remember and where were you? And, man, how did that change the world? Because it changed the world in so many ways. And you were the manager of the Blue Jays on 9-11, September the 11th, 2001. And I know you and the team were already down in Baltimore, I believe. The Blue Jays were supposed to play in Baltimore that night, right? Yeah, the yeah. Blue Jays had finished up. We'd finished up in Detroit. We had an off day on Monday, September 10th. And I flew home to New Jersey to be with my wife, Arlene, and my son, Casey. And then I got up early and was driving down to Baltimore to join the team in Baltimore. And I heard the traffic copter flying over Manhattan talking about there's smoke coming out of a building down in the end of... Uh, Manhattan and then they started to investigate they flew over there and they said oh my there's been a plane crash and then somebody called in the news and said yeah it was a private plane that crashed into the building and then all kinds of stories started to come out and then they of course started to develop well it wasn't a private jet it was a jumbo jet and it flew into the building and then there were more and it was a horrible time and all the while I was driving down to Baltimore and my cell phone was dead of course so I couldn't call my family, and it was just a horrible time. And the team was in Baltimore, and we joined them then. I brought all the coaches up to my suite in the hotel on the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, and we just basically spent the next three days watching television. Yep. We didn't do anything. Yeah, people who may be too young to remember may not understand that everything just ground stopped. to a halt. Everything yeah. stopped. Um, there were no commercial flights for several days. Um, you know, there's the great story about how many planes that were coming from Europe to the United States landed in, in Newfoundland and were taken in because there were thousands and thousands of passengers. All planes had to be landed immediately, as soon as possible. And so basically where you were was where you were going to be for several days because you couldn't get out of there. You know, people trying to bus home, rent cars, do anything they could to get in touch with their loved ones and try to get back home. Mitch Moreland, the batter, but a 2 2 count and a swing and a miss. Good movement on that fastball. One down. And baseball resumed one week later. 9 uh, 11 was Tuesday, September 11. The baseball resumed Tuesday, September 18th. So the season, uh, they, they, the week that was supposed to have been played became the last week of the season. Um, and it was a very emotional thing because, because, of course, in 2001, the Yankees were in the World Series. And while the games were being played in the Bronx, there were still, it was past the time of rescue efforts, obviously, and sadly at that point, but cleanup efforts were still going on. They lasted months and months and years and years uh, down in lower Manhattan. It was a very emotional time, and baseball kind of became intertwined with it in, in many ways through the two New York teams. Yeah, and you remember the images of the Yankees and the Mets wearing New York Police Department hats yep. and fire department hats. It was a great way to come together for everybody. A sad way to come together for sure. Then Intendi pops up and quickly two down for Font. You mentioned Gander Newfoundland and yep. if anybody hasn't seen it you certainly have to go see Come From Away. Yep. It does a terrific job of retelling the story of how Newfoundland and the people in Gander opened up their homes opened up their hearts and took care of 7000 people that were stuck in Gander because the air traffic control had shut down 7000 people in a town of 13000 people well you've seen the play right yeah and I've seen the documentary uh, so we can each only speak to what we've seen they're both fantastic yeah. Right? So, yeah they do such a great job of telling the story and there's so many things you forget about that had to be addressed for all those 7000 people yeah. Danny Jansen lost the handle on that ball. Try to throw it back to Wilmer Font, so they'll take that ball out of play. My pitching coach, Mark Connor, texts me every morning of 9 11 asking how my family is, and we'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And he and Garth Thorge, my first base coach, we all communicate and text back and forth most of the morning of every 9 11. And there was a ceremony before the game tonight. First responders here locally in Toronto were part of the ceremony. 
I have a picture that brings back all of it very vividly of when we started on that Tuesday against the Orioles Cal Ripken and I standing at home plate with both teams up the foul lines as we resume play. And the first responders were honored here tonight from Toronto and it's just uh, one of those days that nobody will ever forget. Yep. Two down and an 0 2 count on Christian Vasquez and a ground ball up the middle Bichette to his left on to first wide throw past Drury and Vasquez is aboard. Uh, I think Bichette had a little more time to set his feet and make a throw Vasquez the catcher he runs well but I think Bo had a little more time to get his feet underneath him and make a good throw. He threw that one on the run and it just tailed on him and watch how Vasquez comes out of the box right here just shuffle your feet one more time and he threw from the side and missed by a mile over at first that'll be his sixth air of the season. And that's one thing that major league coaches will talk about a lot is for players younger players to really improve on that internal clock. There goes the runner. Throw down by Jansen, bounced in, and the element of surprise, Christian Vasquez with his third stolen base of the season. Yeah, and that's a good time to do it. Right after a team has made an error, and he kind of caught everybody a little bit flat footed. Wilmer Font did not even look at him at first base. He gets a running start. He just walks off the base, walks off the base. They never stop him. He got a running start. Not much of a chance for Danny Jansen to throw him out. So Vasquez gets himself into scoring position with two outs. The batter is Jackie Bradley Jr. The center fielder hitting 223 on the season. Wilmer Font pitching is the opener for the Blue Jays tonight. Trent Thornton will be the bulk guy or the featured pitcher or however you want to say it. And is likely to come in to start at the top of the third. Font opening for the 11th time this season. And this will be the first time that Thornton does not start a game. He is on the mound right now, getting loose in case his services are needed here in the second. But they won't be. Font strikes out of Bradley to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the second. No score. Out on the run is Lariano, and he makes the catch. An amazing catch. Sails a throw back to first base, and this is in time. On the fly from Ramon Laureano. Now a 3 1 for Acuna. Swinging a high fly ball. Deep to left field. Way, way back. It's gone. The grandest of all home runs. Here's the pitch. Swinging a hard hit ball inside third. Base hit. Down the left field line. Mazzara gets the third. Adrian going to second. He's got a double for 3,000. 2 0 pitch. Swinging. There it is. Here comes Osmus. The star at tie. Mid went to make it a double. He didn't get the trademark, but he did get 3,000 hits. The fans are on their feet. Now the only man in between Paxton and the history books, a former American League MVP, Josh Donaldson. To Seager, the pick, the throw, Paxton has done it! It's a no-hitter! Sale winds, he fires. Swing and a miss, strike three, it's over! The Red Sox have won the World Championship. They win the World Series, four games to one. Can you believe it? Each row to right. It's probably like seeing the Boston Red Sox come to town, or it doesn't matter where he faces them. Look at the numbers that Teles has had against Boston pitching this year. Ten games, hitting over 400, OPS over 1,500, with six home runs in those ten games, including a two-run shot last night. Rowdy had one of his longest home runs of the season at Fenway Park earlier this season. It was measured at 452 feet, and he has really enjoyed it. And, you know, that's a... Tough accomplishment. Uh, of course, you're going to face the Red Sox 19 times a season, and Rowdy's made the most of his at bats against Boston. Shift on, no score, bottom two, and a strike from Pointer. It's 0 1. Rowdy had kind of a fun moment last night as well after the game. He has come to know a couple of huge Blue Jays fans. Corey and Olivia Bainbridge are their names. They met down at spring training, I believe, the first time, and 
happened to bump into each other at a restaurant and Rowdy said they were great friendly people and he's gotten to know them a little bit and Olivia Bainbridge is pregnant and they asked Rowdy to do their gender reveal so after the game last night they came out and they threw a baseball the family someone in the family threw a baseball to Rowdy and as he hits the ball it explodes and either blue or pink comes out. And I said, have you ever done? He goes, I've never done anything like that before. He said, I was a little nervous because the pitch came in a little bit low and I didn't want to swing and miss at the pitch. That was my first concern. So he did make contact. And congratulations to Rowdy's friends, Corey and Olivia Bainbridge, who are going to have a baby girl. Yeah, I saw the whole thing last night. There was quite a crowd on the field, obviously, families of both the couples. And then Rowdy took a big swing and a big puff of pink smoke came out of that <laughs> baseball. So. You know that's the new thing now. Everybody's going to have a gender reveal. Somebody's going to have some kind of exploding baseball mm -hmm. that is either pink or blue. In this case, it was a baseball last night. 18 home runs on the season now for Teles. Couldn't check the swing right there, and he knew it. And he's down on strikes, one down. So four up four down for Bobby Pointer for the Red Sox so far. Yeah the Red Sox bullpen started to go to work Pointer is making his first major league start a four seam fastball you can see the spin upstairs and Rowdy recognized it was going to be high but he couldn't check his swing in time and that's the first strikeout for Pointer as a stutter. There's Randall Gritchick in right field again hitting 230 with 25 home runs matching the career high he said last year. Blue Jays winning four to three last night. They'll wrap up this series and their season series with the Red Sox tomorrow night before the Yankees come to town for the weekend. The Yankees will actually get in here tomorrow night. They've got a day game with the Tigers tomorrow, so they'll get in tomorrow night and be here probably while the Blue Jays are playing. They have a double oh, header. They have a double header. Oh, I missed they that. They got rained out tonight. Oh. They will play a conventional double header. A long way to center field, but just not quite long enough. Two down. Rake in the deals during Home Hardware's fall saving sale. On now till September 18th. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Boston, like the Blue Jays, using an opener tonight, as Buck mentioned, and... Here's the first guy who's going to be coming out of the bullpen right hander Trevor Kelly at some point soon. It this could be interesting Trevor Kelly could pitch against his former college teammate. Trent Thornton they both pitched in North Carolina. A couple of Tar Heels. And as Teoscar Hernandez fouls one back going to one. They both played three years together in North Carolina along with Colin Moran the third baseman of the Pirates. So that'd be an interesting matchup. Red Sox have had a number of bullpen games or something to that effect recently. Frequently using seven or eight pitchers in games in the last week or so. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way baseball is now especially in September and we have talked about it. The bullpen for Boston is overloaded. They got more arms down there and they know what to do with David Price can't pitch. He's got a cyst in his hand. Chris Sale's out for the year. Nathan them all they started last night and they've got a full house in the dugout as well. Well if you're on their 40 man roster and you didn't get a call up in September you're doing something wrong in the Red Sox organization. Well I tell you what there is so much uncertainty now with the news that we heard a couple of days ago that Dave Nebrowski's out as a GM and. You know, a lot of people trying to speculate what happens now. They remove him knowing that they were going to get rid of him anyway to give them a jump start on the replacement and certainly has to be difficult for a manager in his second season. And the manager, the GM that hired him is now gone. Right. I can relate to that. Happened to me. Happened to you. That's right. Yeah. And there's so much uncertainty. Gee, Gord Ash got fired after my first season in 2001 and then J.P. Ricciardi came in and. I knew I was not very long for the job. And it's a bad feeling.
No balls, two strikes. The count remains on Hernandez with two down and the bases empty here in the bottom of the second. And a swing and a miss. Pointer strikes him out, and he has retired all six batters he has faced. No score at the end of two. And here comes Trent Thornton into the ballgame for the Blue Jays. Robinson Cano in his Mets debut. Sox went out center. Back goes Robles into the gap to the warning track at the wall. And it's out of here. Robinson Cano goes deep in his first at bat as a New York Mets. If you're looking for some great Blue Jay info, check out At The Letters with Ben Nicholson-Smith and Arden Zwelling. They break down the last few weeks of the season for the Jays and a look ahead to 2020. Find At The Letters wherever you get your podcasts. New pitcher for the Blue Jays. The first time he has appeared as something other than a starter this year is Trent Thornton. And here's the reason I asked Pete Walker before the game about it, and they said, uh, and Pete said listen he's always been in a six man rotation in the minors this is the first time as a pro he's ever been in a five man rotation the innings are getting up there they just want to take care of him, not push him too hard the Red Sox are a good hitting team they've roughed up Thornton a couple of times earlier this year and they just want to make things make life a little bit easier on him in this outing so that's why Wilmer Font was in there as the opener there's a liner to center and Jonathan Davis coming and getting it. Yeah, I mean, there you see the defensive skills of Jonathan Davis. He really got a good read on contact, and that's the toughest play for a center fielder. That line drive. Watch him in the background. Watch how quickly he reacts to this ball, and he comes in quickly. He's got the speed to play. Now that looked like it had a chance to get down in front of him, but he closed ground very quickly. That is not unlike the play he made in the TJ Zoic no hitter in the ninth inning. He dove and took a hit away to preserve that no hitter. He could play center. He made one of the best plays of the season down in Tampa Bay back in May when he went to the alley in left center and dove going away from the infield and made a terrific diving catch. The question, of course, is will he hit enough? Does the bat play for him to be a full time big league player? And it started to look and feel like Buck. The Blue Jays are going to give them a pretty healthy look here in the last two and a half weeks of the season to see what they've got. I, I think you have to find out because he's getting up in years now. He's 27 years old and you have to find out if he can be the guy that you can put out there in the center. And, and then you have to address your offense. And this is the whole thing is Jackie Bradley Jr. has had an inconsistent career offensively. But he's been the everyday short or everyday center fielder for the Boston Red Sox because he is so good defensively. So you have to find out if you have enough enough offense as the Blue Jays to put Jonathan Davis out there in center. Or if you can trade for a better option but I think it's a good test and a good opportunity for Jonathan Davis for to for him to show just what he can do in center field. A lot of outfielders on the roster right now. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. is still on the injured list so there are six outfielders rotating in and out of the lineup. Good breaking ball there from Thornton and Holt chases two down. Yeah, you had mentioned Trent's had his problems facing the Red Sox coming into this outing. 24 hits in 10 and a third over three starts, and that's a good curveball. 
and hole was way out in front of it. Thornton had kind of some bad luck in that he faced Boston three times in a five start span and that that's never a good thing for a pitcher when the hitter can see the same guy so often in such a, a short time period his first start against the Red Sox went pretty well six and a third two runs eight hits at Fenway Park on June 21st but July 2nd here at Rogers Center roughed up seven earned runs two and two thirds and then faced them again two starts later at Fenway. And again a tough time five earned runs in an inning and a third hasn't seen him since. And there was some talk back then about tipping his pitches and the Red Sox were on to him a little bit and the Blue Jays have done some some work on that with Thornton at various points during the season. Sure didn't seem like he was a candidate back in the middle of March to make 28 starts for this team this year but a lot of other guys. Whether it was injuries early, eventually trades, of course. There's Matt Shoemaker, of course, who went down with that knee injury back in May. And good to see him back with the team. He's ahead of schedule uh, on his rehab from the torn ACL. He started some throwing. He wants to get some bullpens in in the next month or so, shut it down, and then hopefully feel 100% coming back into spring training. Yeah, he says he's going to be able to go through a normal offseason. He's really been pleased with the way his leg has responded. And I saw him throwing here yesterday out in the outfield, so that's a great sign. And I, I think it really speaks volumes. Of course, not knowing who might pitch for the Blue Jays that's not in the organization right now, Matt Shoemaker is the perfect candidate to be the senior member of this pitching staff. Terrific guy, character guy, always anxious to help his teammates, and he shows his concern about this club by showing up here in September. Yeah I would think that the Blue Jays will delve into the free agent market for somebody whether it's one or two. But you look around and it could be a Barucky could be a Thornton could be a Waggis pack could be K could be Zoic. It figures to be a pretty young rotation again and I, I agree with you Shoemaker has mentor and father figure and he's not that old I don't want to make him sound older than he is but but he's a guy very willing to spend time and help out younger younger yeah, pitchers. He's a terrific character guy that's yeah. for sure. Outside and that's ball four as Bogarts takes a walk. So a two out base runner for the Red Sox here in the third no score in this game and that'll bring up Devers who had a blue base hit to left field his first time up. When you look at the Boston lineup and look at the matchups that they have against Trent Thornton, it's uh, kind of frightening because you mentioned the numbers, but Devers himself is three for five with a home run. But then again, it seems like he's three for five against every Blue Jay yeah. pitcher this year. Blue Jays will not be sorry to see the last of him this season. You know, I asked him about that little move right there, how he takes a deep breath, closes his eyes, and gathers his thoughts. And I had mentioned it, it might be in reaction to watching J.D. Martinez, but he said it's not the case at all. He said he's worked with their mental skills coach, and he's kind of developed this himself. I said, what do you do? He said, just kind of clear my mind in between pitches and just refocus on the next pitch and kind of forget about that last pitch and just regroup and get it going again. I spoke to Tim Hires, their hitting coach, about the differences he has seen in Devers from this year to last year. He said, I've got more movement. He says he's got more movement with his hands, and there's a separation now. Instead of carrying his hands with his front shoulder, they kind of separate. When that front foot hits the ground, his hands go back, and he's in a great launching position. Nobody's ever doubted the talent. And he's also taken care of himself better. He. Uh, Hired a nutritionist last offseason, lost weight. He was on the what was then known as the disabled list three times last year, wanted to avoid that, really took care of himself more in the offseason. Came into camp in a much better shape this year than he had in his first two years in the big league. Yeah, he looks great. He really has done a great job of taking control of his career. He's still having issues in the field. He's committed to 22 airs. He and Vladdy Guerrero Jr. teammates in the winter ball. They play on the same winter ball team. And they are first and second in airs committed at third base. Devers is committed 22. Vladdy's committed 16. But they can swing it. 2 2. 
And he got him. Chased a breaking ball in the dirt. And that'll retire the side. A couple of strikeouts for Thornton here in the third, and still no score in this game. And he swings and drives one left center field deep. Hernandez back at the wall. Goodbye. Home run, Steve Pierce. High fly ball in the left. Back at the wall. He's got another. How about Steve Pierce? Seattle Mariners, Felix Hernandez, the 2 2. He got him. It's finally happened. A perfect game by a Seattle Mariners. It was done by the King. 2 2 pitch on the way. Swing and miss. He struck him out. Verlander has done it again. The second no hitter in his young career. His first hit of the year. Oh. He drives one deep left field. That goes up to him. back near the wall. It's out of here. <laughs> Bartolo has done it. The impossible has happened. Yelich knocks one to the gap in right center. This could be the one. He's going to be held to a double. He's trying for three. He's going to do it. And he's on right center field. The first one in the Phillies uniform is a bomb into the second deck for Bryce Hopper as the Bills lead it 7 to 4. Two home runs. 29th to celebrate the Fan Appreciation Weekend presented by TD. On Saturday, the first 15,000 fans in a Roger Center will receive a Blue Jays fanny pack. Sunday will be our final Junior Jays Sunday of the season. Prizes and activities throughout the games. Get your tickets at bluejays.com slash promotions. Hard to believe just one more homestand after this one. No scores. We go to the bottom of the third. Trevor Kelly comes into the game for the Red Sox. A couple of different stints with the Boston this year. And he made his major league debut right in this ballpark. The day after Canada Day. Gave up three earned runs in his first inning of work. Yeah, in a good season in AAA, he was named a 2019 International League Mid-Season and Postseason All-Star, five and five with 12 saves. And we mentioned we saw him. He got hit around a little bit in that Major League debut. And as I mentioned earlier, he and Trent Thornton were college teammates at the University of North Carolina. And now opposing each other with this moment in this game drops down and spins that breaking ball down and away for ball one one and one on Jonathan Davis in the big leagues this year and limited at bats hitting 172 and triple A this year hit 262 with an OPS of 831 showed a little pop down to the minors this year they'll appeal and he went around says Chris Siegel the first base umpire so it's one and two on Davis. What do you see offensively when you look at Davis. Well you know we haven't seen him an awful lot and I'm not trying to avoid the question but I, you know he does square up the baseball from time to time and I just think uh, you would have to have a better ex example of his at bats and get a chance to see him a little more frequently you know when you come up like he did last year all you're trying to do is make a big impression but I think if he gets an opportunity to have some regular bats he will show that. He might be able to hit enough because he certainly has another asset the Blue Jays don't have much of, and that's speed. Yep. Yeah, speed and defense, really the two things that he has in abundance. It's how much can he do with a bat? Fly ball to center here for out number one. You know, and it's very difficult to judge a player in spring training or in September. I mean, that's the old adage. You can't go by what you see in the spring, and you can't go by what you see in September. So I think we're going to have to see a longer look of. Jonathan Davis before you can really make a judgment but you know he's kind of running out of time. The options are a concern as well. No he's still controllable in terms of options beyond this year. There's a bunt foul as Brandon Drury was trying to bunt for a base hit if you're looking at other outfielders on the Blue Jays roster. Derek Fisher and Anthony Alford and we just saw a shot of Alford in the dugout they are both out of options next year Billy McKinney still has one next season and Davis still has a couple. So obviously what that means is if they don't make the team then they're exposed to waiver wire and anybody yep. can claim them off of that. It's a it's a crowded group right now. 
you know, it, the assumption is Randall Grichuk's going to be the right fielder next year, and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. is going to be the left fielder next year. I think that's probably an odds on statement that's going to happen because Grichuk signed an extension for five years. He's going to be in right field. Lourdes Gurriel certainly has grabbed a hold of the left field position since he's made that transition, played very well. Swing and a miss. Again, that sidearm breaking ball. Trouble for Drury, two down. Yeah, Kelly has a very interesting delivery. It, it's almost like he's short arming it from the side, but look at the break on this breaking ball. Big sweeping slider gets Drury to swing and miss. So Pointer and Kelly have set down the first eight Blue Jays they have faced tonight. The number nine hitter is the catcher, Danny Jansen. And that slider starts behind your your leg and winds up outside. Reese McGuire with a good night last night and Charlie Montoyo saying for the most part he just thinks he's going to alternate the catchers the rest of the way they may play matchups a little bit or the hot hand a little bit but the playing time should be about equal the rest of the way for McGuire and Jansen. Most teams have a number one catcher and a defined backup. But you wonder if these two guys are the guys going forward, could it be more of a 90 games, 70 games, or 80 games, 80 games rather than a starter and a backup? Yeah, and if you played a straight platoon, obviously Reese McGuire would get more at bats because they're more right handed pitchers than left handed pitchers. But I, I think they're a long way from deciding one over the other, but Reese McGuire certainly improved his position when you look at what he has done since joining the team. You can't have too many good catchers, that's for sure. It's one position where the Blue Jays are kind of deep down in the minor leagues. They've got some pretty good catching prospects. When you think about who they have down in their minor leagues, and it's. Uh, Riley Adams is in double A and beyond that is Kirk and Moreno a couple of guys yeah. in a ball and they're both in their early 20s. And they can both hit. It's definitely an area of strength in the organization. Green to the count on Jansen. And a swing and a miss. Another breaking ball from Kelly as he sets down the Blue Jays in order here in the bottom of the third. The fans are on their feet. Now the only man in between Paxton and the history books, a former American League MVP, Josh Donaldson. To Seager, the pick, the throw, Paxton has done it! It's a no-hitter! Now a 3-1 for Acuna. Swinging a high fly ball, deep to left field, way, way back, it's gone! The grandest of all home runs. 2-0 pitch. Swinging. There it is. Here comes Osmus. The star in time. Mitch wants to make it a double. He didn't get the trademark, but he did get 3,000 hits. Here's the pitch. Swinging a hard hit ball. Inside third. Base hit. Down the left field line. Mazzara gets the third. Adrian going to second. He's got a double for 3,000. 9.49 now in Atlanta, 6.49 in Arizona, and a 2-2 to Perez. Swing and a miss, and Randy Johnson has thrown a perfect game. Sale winds, he fires. Swing and a miss, strike three, it's over. The Red Sox have won the World Championship. They win the World Series, four games to one. Can you believe it? Looking for hit number one from Franchi Cordero. He stuck it out! The Dodgers have thrown a combined no-hitter! And on the 13th and final strikeout of the game. Well, that Trent Thornton in 28 starts this season, his first 16. He was doing well. He was battling. He was relatively consistent. 
five of the next seven did not go well at all. You see the inflated numbers. The last five starts have gone pretty well. Hasn't gotten that deep into the games, but again, they're managing his innings a little bit as a rookie, but he has competed in his last five starts. Didn't start tonight, came in in the third inning after Wilmer Fonda went the first two. Now in his second inning of work as we go to the top of the fourth inning. You know, you can look at the numbers, but do the numbers tell the story? If, if I were to say to you, and I'm about to, <laughs> How do you think Trent Thornton's season has gone. How would you rate his season uh, you know given the role that he was put into and what the expectations were back in March. I think it's been a very good season considering he was able to make 28 starts to this point in the season. He logged a lot of innings he got a lot of good matchups and he had some great moments seven innings of one hit ball against the Rangers down in Texas back in May. He had a couple of good outings later on six innings at Baltimore. He threw another six inning outing in Baltimore and you know he set a franchise record with eight strikeouts in his major league debut. And it has since been tied by Anthony Kay. But I, I think for a guy that was targeted to be a starter in triple A. In spring training Trent has done a nice job. And I think he understands what he has to work on. He has cut his walks down dramatically over his last seven or eight starts. And I, I think if he commands his fastball more consistently, I think he's got a chance to be a pretty competitive pitcher. And one of the other high points for him was when the Blue Jays were down in Houston in June. That was the team that drafted him, of course, and six and two thirds scoreless. He followed that one up with a good one against the Red Sox, and then uh, the wheels came off for a little bit. But you know what? In, in a season where so many pitchers have gotten hurt, Trent Thornton has stayed healthy, and he's taken the ball. And he strikes out J.D. Martinez. Yeah, he's done a nice job. And you can see the difference when he's able to get the fastball where he wants it. Back to back strike as he struck out Devers on a breaking ball. And here's a four seam fastball. And you can see the location down and away. I don't care who you are or how hard you throw. If you locate your fastball, you can have success in the big leagues. Whether it's 108 or 88, doesn't make any difference. Shift on for Mitch Moreland who struck out his first time up that was against Wilmer Font who went two scoreless tonight. One hit struck out a couple another good job by Font as the opener. Check swing foul off by Moreland. If I were putting an organization together in this day and age the one thing I would do in spring training is insist on my pitchers commanding their fastball. And you have to command the fastball in all nine quadrants of the strike zone move it around and you have to be able to throw a strike at will. And in order to do that you've got to command your delivery you've got to maintain your delivery repeat your delivery and make sure that you can throw a strike anytime you want to. I think there's way too much emphasis put on velocity. And the great Tom Seaver always talked about the three elements of pitching location movement and velocity and velocity is the least important. It's like they're staying loose and maybe uh, dodging phantom foul balls in that third base dugout right now. There's a good breaking ball from Thornton in one and two. And the inability to command his fastball really has been the undoing of Sean Reed Foley this year, no who, who was up and down and up and down and, and, you know, pretty high draft pick and high hopes, but just couldn't command it enough this year. And, you know, a lot of guys got September call up. Sean Reed Foley's not here right now. And he, he had a tough time, had a tough time in the minors, had a tough time in the big leagues this year. And I think his stuff is major league quality but until you learn how to command your pitches I mean I'll go back to a game he had last year in Miami the second of September he had ten strikeouts in seven innings and he had one walk through one hundred and one pitches but he was making pitches quality pitches and you can dominate when you make good pitches. Well, Thornton's mixing nicely right now. We've seen some good breaking balls. That was a change up right there, and Moreland was out in front. We saw a cutter in on Moreland that backed him off the plate a little bit. Corey Hart's the AAA hitting coach, having a chat with Anthony Alfred. Of course, they work together, and he's trying to explain what Mitch Moreland might be doing, what he's might looking for here. Room out there for Jonathan Davis to make the catch and Moreland retired two down. 
rake in the deals during Home Hardware's Fall Savings Sale. On now till September 18th. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Muggy day here in Toronto. The roof is closed tonight for the ball game. There was some kind of lightning and thunderstorm last night about 45 minutes after the game. And really an unusually warm mid September day here in Toronto. The roof is closed. They just opened it for the team photo at about 3.30 to get some better lighting and then closed it back up again. Two down and the shift is on for Andrew Benintendi who popped up at his first at bat tonight. And he pulls a ground ball out into shallow right. Biggio there. That's a one, two, three, top of the fourth for Trent Thornton. This game remains scoreless. Rivera sets and deals. Strike three. Ball game over. Yankees win. The greatest closure in history now has the most saves in history. Cespedes decide the move, he's not going to get it. And it rolls off the side wall, and they're going to wave home Kendrick. The throw to the plate is there, oh my and goodness. they got it. Are you kidding me? Wow. Two home runs tonight. I'd like to see a hat trick. I don't know about you. Goldschmidt, high drive, out to left. You bet he's done it. Three home runs. Yelich knocks one to the gap in right center. This could be the one. He's going to be held. By both John Schneider and AAA hitting coach Corey Hart. While watching Bichette take BP, the men suggested he considered toning down the big leg kick with less than two strikes, so he's a little bit more consistent at the plate. The suggestion was met by a respectful but firm no. Bichette explaining, remember when Tiger Woods was winning all those majors? He didn't care if he hit the ball over 300 yards and it ended up in the rough because his short game was so good. Well, my two-strike approach is my short game. Schneider and Hart both looked at each other and said, you win, keep doing what you're doing because that was the perfect answer. Dan? For a guy as young as he is, and maybe this is because, as we've talked about, he grew up in the game with his dad being a big leaguer, but for a guy as young as he is, he's got a very good idea, Buck, of what he wants to be and what he needs to do to be what he wants to be. Yeah, he wants to be one of the best players in the game. And you do that by continuing to work. And after the game last night, he went down and hit the batting cage. And he had some things he wants to iron out. He has not hit well in the month of September, and he's aware of that. And he's getting some pitches to hit that he's not been able to hit. And he has hit just 182 in the month of September, six for 33. And so he wants to work, and he and John Snyder, of course, have a great relationship, as does Corey Hart and Guillermo Martinez as well. And Martinez worked with Bo in spring training. Bo was the best player the Blue Jays had in spring training. Many scouts that watched him on an everyday basis all raved about Bo Bichette and he's your best player. He played well on the field. He got big hits. Did a nice job for them. Boy Kelly painting on the outside corner as he jumps out in front of one and two. And again we will see a lot of Red Sox pitchers tonight. Brian Johnson Ryan Weber both huh. Last night, Bo Bichette in the game against the Red Sox saw Nathan Avaldi three times, Ryan Brazier once, and Matt Barnes once. He did not see a fastball under 97 miles an hour last night. Well, he had talked about fastballs in reference to the Verlander no hitter. He said, you know, if pitchers locate their fastballs, you're going to get outs. You're going to make outs. He said, I don't care how hard they throw it, how soft they throw it. If they make good quality pitches, he said, we make our living on hitting mistakes. And you just make sure that you don't miss those mistakes when you get a chance to hit one that's out over the plate. 
Bo was visibly upset when he made the final out of that no hitter on Sunday and he went back in the dugout and slammed his bat in the rack and slammed his helmet on the bench. He just expected to get a hit. But he told me afterwards that every fastball Verlander threw he threw exactly where he wanted it. That's how you throw no hitters. <laughs> And it is a future Hall of Famer that we're talking about there who was at the top of his game swing and a miss there by Bo and he's retired one down. Now everybody looks at this big swing and thinks that Bo is swinging and pulling himself off the ball but he just missed this one and Bo himself said he's drifting a little bit and when you do that you're going to change the bat plane. I mean that's a very hittable pitch and he's going to be upset he missed that one. Now, 88 miles an hour right out over the plate and he just swings right through it. But he feels like he's drifting toward the pitcher a little bit too much with his body, and that's changing his angle of his bat path. Now here's Biggio, and again, maybe it's because it's a right hander as opposed to a left hander. Now they've got the shift on against Biggio, which they did not have with the left hander pointer out there. And again, it may be as simple as from a lefty, most of the pitches move away from a left handed batter, so not as easy to pull. The StatCast AI is powered by AWS, and we thought we'd show you the spread chart for Cabin Biggio and where the defense sets up. You can see they play him to pull, and they've got three defenders in 29 and 46 percentile where he hits the ball. And they're not concerned about the left side of the infield at all because he just doesn't hit many balls over there. And of course, all of this information is based on 162 games, and over the course of a season, those numbers are going to play out. But the hitters now in my estimation have to make adjustments from game to game and take advantage of all the spacious holes in the outfield and the infield. I think what happens to a lot of these young hitters is they've had hitting coaches they've hit the same way they've hit off tee they hit by the numbers years ago guys used to have different bats for different types of hitters they would move to different spots in the batter's box they'd move up according to a sinker ball pitcher they'd move back when a fastball pitcher was pitching and guys did a lot of different things tricky play and it's not going to be made by Devers throw to second is not in time. That's a difficult play at the best of times and complicated by the fact that the Red Sox were in the shift a long run for Devers but Buck he actually kind of overran the ball almost. Yeah that's exactly what happened to him he got over there and that ball kind of drifted back toward the field of play he ran expecting it to be in foul territory and then it comes back and you can see the ball just handcuffed him he missed it. That intendi wasn't an issue right there but he kind of overruns it and then reaches back over his head and then loses sight of the baseball and never really had a shot at catching it. But the good part of this play is the fact that Kevin Biggio didn't concede that it was an out. He hustled out of the box ends up sliding in safely at second it'll be scored a double. First hit and the first base runner of any kind for the Blue Jays tonight a one out double for Biggio here in the bottom of the fourth. And that'll bring up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in this scoreless game. Jammed and he fouls one to back below us. It's 0 1. Sometimes after a foul ball, Guerrero will walk out of the box and his facial expression, and maybe I'm misreading it, says to me sometimes. Man I should have crushed that one. That's a pitch I really should have done damage on. He's got that little kind of wry smile on his face. We used to see it all the time with Edwin Encarnacion. I think you're reading it right on. Felt like he should have hit that first pitch and then he gets the next one right on the corner and there's the expression I can't hit that yeah, one. Yeah yeah. <laughs> if he does that again I'm out. Yeah. Pretty good numbers for a rookie, especially a rookie that's 20 years old. Runner is going, and the pitch taken for ball one, and there's no throw as Biggio takes third. 
Uh, he's 11 for 11 in steal attempts, and he has not been caught. He's got tremendous instincts, and he recognized the pitcher. One look, and then he turns his head, and Cavan was full three or four strides into it before Kelly made a move toward the plate. Now the infield has to come in. I mean, that's a big 90 feet. Yeah. See if Laddie can get something in the air and get this run home. He sure can. Hits it a long way to left field. It'll be caught on the edge of the track by Benintendi. Tagging and scoring is Biggio. One to nothing, Blue Jays. Well, that's a terrific play by Kevin Biggio. Vladdy takes advantage of it, and Vladdy should make a point of going down there and say, hey, buddy, good job to get to third base. It's so much better hitting when you have a guy at third base as opposed to thinking about having to get a base hit. You're so much more relaxed to think all I got to do is hit this ball to the outfield and by Biggio stealing third base it was an easy at bat for Guerrero all he's got to do is put a nice smooth swing out and he cashes in. RBI number 62 for Guerrero the first run of the ball game tonight and here's Rowdy Telez. field and it's gone second home run in his many nights for Rowdy Telez and it is two to nothing number 19 on the season for Telez and his seventh home run of the season against Boston. He's wearing out Red Sox pitching. And all these good things happen when you force the issue and you get back to Biggio hustling on the pop up, stealing third base. He set up the sack fly for Guerrero and then Rowdy Telez punctuates it a little bit with a homer to deep right center. Nice easy swing from Telez. He didn't try to muscle it out there. He just got the barrel on the base play so strong. He doesn't have to try to hit it 400 feet. It's going to go 400 feet. 19th home run. A terrific smooth swing by Rowdy. You can see not much of a stride at all. Just used his hands and got the barrel of that baseball and hits it into the seats. They want to get a long look at him. They want to see as much of Rowdy Telez over the next two and a half weeks as they can to try to decide exactly what they have here, what they what they think of him going forward. Now he has done a great job hitting against the Red Sox, and Randall hits a one hopper to the right fielder. Pitch was away. He took it the other way for a line drive single. And here comes Alex Korn. It looks like that'll be all for Kelly with Teoscar Hernandez coming up. Now Kelly made his debut against the Blue Jays and it didn't go so well. He gave up three runs in the bottom of the ninth on two hits and had a strikeout. He's out of the game. Drives one in the air. Deep center field. Back goes Taylor. It's got a chance. It's a grand slam. A grand slam for David Bodie. And the Cubs have won the ball game. The fans are on their feet. Now the only man in between Paxton and the history books. A former American League MVP. Josh Donaldson. To Seager. The pick. The throw. Paxton has done it. It's a no hit. And this is in time on the fly from Ramon Laureano. Sale winds. He fires. Swing and a miss. Strike three. It's over. The Red Sox have won the World Championship. They win the World Series. Four games to one. Can you believe it? Long looking 
for his first hit of the year. Oh. He drives one! Deep left field! That goes Upton! Back near the wall! It's out of here! <laughs> Bartolo has done it! The impossible has happened! Two on, two out. Ken Bennett. That's in the air to left! Here comes Fisher! Ryan Weber becomes the third pitcher of the night for the Red Sox, with the Blue Jays now leading two to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Weber making his fourth appearance against the Blue Jays in his career. He's actually made two starts. He's pitched very well against the Blue Jays, holding them to a 205 batting average. He's not overpowering by any means, and he understands that. He's a guy that has to make quality pitches. He's got a nice sinking fastball, a curveball, a little cutter, and a changeup. He's one of those guys that you come back to the dugout after striking out after grounding. I said I'll get you next time. <laughs> and he has pitched a lot against the Blue Jays in triple A. So they know him they have seen him and they both have faced each other in the big leagues as well. Throw to first and diving back in is Gritchick. Teoscar Hernandez looking to snap out of an 0 for 11 slump right now. And most of the outs have been strikeouts. He has had a tough time in the last several days. A little bit outside, 2 0. Yeah, he ran into some real tough pitching down in Tampa Bay and really had a rough four game series, just like the rest of his teammates. Of course, Tampa Bay swept the Blue Jays in a four game series for the first time in their franchise history. And the Blue Jays struck out a ton 50 times in four games. Breaking ball will go to the backstop and Grichik easily into second. I would think it's one of those that will be scored a wild pitch, but if I know the catcher beside me, he'll say that's one the catcher should have had, even though it wasn't that good of a pitch. Absolutely. When you call a breaking ball, the only place it's going to beat you is to the right. So you really have to guard against that ball. And you can see how the lady was reacting, just tried to backhand it and it will be a wild pitch charge to Weber, but that's the ball that Vasquez has got to catch. Vasquez has nine pass balls this year. There's a liner in the right field for a base hit. Charging his hole to the ball was hit so hard that Agrichik will be held at third. And now as the throw is kicked around a little bit near the plate, Hernandez will take second on the play. Yeah, heads up base running by Teoscar because that ball was played off the catcher's chest protector. The Red Sox haven't played a very clean game here tonight. And it's a great piece of hitting by Teoski. He stays on the fastball. Louis Rivera stops the runner Grichik at third because it was hit right to hold. But look at Vasquez. He plays it off his chest protector instead of trying to catch it. And Teoscar, because he was watching the play develop, is able to take advantage of that. And he will turn around and watch the play and see the catcher play it off his chest protector and reacts immediately to take the extra 90 feet. Here's a strike taken by Jonathan Davis. Initially, we are told it's obviously a single for Hernandez and just second on the throw that no error has been assigned on the play. I don't agree with that because he stopped at first base. Right. He stopped at first base and he wasn't going to second at all until it was misplayed by the catcher. I don't think you could penalize the outfielder in that situation. And Vasquez played it off his chest protector, but. I think there should be an error involved. And usually if the throw bounces then the error is charged to the outfielder so that would be on a hold. We'll wait and see if that's revised but either way Hernandez with some alert base running. See if Jonathan Davis can cash in a couple with a base hit here both Grichik and Hernandez going the other way for their singles. Blue Jays with a couple of runs in already and a sack fly by Vladimir Guerrero Junior and a home run by Rowdy Telez. One two. Check the swing on that sweeping slider away. Two balls, two strikes. Rowdy in one of those hot streaks right now. It was doubles last September. It's been home runs this September. Now got four home runs in his last eight starts. Chop back towards the mound. Weber waits, takes, and fires to get him and end the inning. 
The Blue Jays though do get a couple and lead two to nothing at the end of four. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here are Jamie Campbell and Joe Siddle in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Well that is 50 cents. Curtis Jackson. Curtis Jackson. And his first pitch was not great. Just a bit outside. That was Curtis Jackson. I don't even like when he comes around. Him. You know, I don't even want him around here. 50 cent is the best. Center field deep. Hernandez back at the wall. Goodbye. Home run, Steve Pierce. High fly ball in the left back. Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you in part by Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays, driving Canada home for 50 years. Glad you're with us tonight for this ball game between the Blue Jays and Red Sox with Buck Martinez and Hazel May. I'm Dan Schulman, the Blue Jays. On the heels of a four to three win last night, lead two to nothing going to the fifth right now. Trent Thornton back out for his third inning of work after Wilmer Font went the first two innings of the game tonight. Thornton has seen seven batters, walked one, retired the other six. The Red Sox with just one hit through four innings. And here's Christian Vasquez. It'll be Vasquez, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Marco Hernandez, the bottom third of the Red Sox lineup. Vasquez involved in a couple of defensive plays in the bottom of the fourth at benefit of the Blue Jays. Thornton looks sharp tonight. Yeah, he does. And I like his tempo. I like his rhythm. I don't think there's any urgency in his approach, and he's been under control. He's got a lot of moving parts to his delivery, but oftentimes when he was starting, he got really rushed and he'd do a lot of things that were very quick. Tonight, he's taking his time. He's made several very good pitches tonight. And I like the fact that he's under control. I think that's the one thing that we have seen him improve. He was always the type of kid that we saw would try to. Muscle his way through tough situations instead of back off and try easier. He always wanted to try harder. And sometimes it looked like it just took an extraordinary amount of effort on his part to get out of a couple of jams or to get through those five innings. Sometimes he would sail, but sometimes it was a lot of effort. Yeah, I think he's one of the guys that could back off and pitch at 92 93 and not always try to reach for 95 and then I think he'd be much better. I like his stuff. I think his stuff is big league caliber stuff. But I think he's going to learn more about pitching in the major leagues by understanding it's not how hard you throw it's how well you locate your pitches and how you mix up your pitches. Ground ball to third sharp hop up to Guerrero and throw on the money one down. Well and he does have a lot of pitches. I mean he throws a fastball if we look at his numbers fastball 47 percent of the time but he's got a cutter and we've seen it tonight. He's got a slider. We've seen that. He's got a curveball. We've seen some good ones tonight. He's got a change up as well. He's got five pitches. I think the one thing you have to recognize as a starting pitcher I think being a good quality starting pitcher is the toughest thing in baseball to do because you have to go through a lineup and sometimes you go to the mound and maybe you have two pitches that are working. So you have to be adaptable and flexible and make adjustments. I think it's the hardest thing in baseball to be a good starting pitcher on a regular basis. But Trent's got enough pitches and what he needs to do is when he goes to the mound identify the pitches that he has control of and make sure you emphasize those early in the game. 
curveball for a strike to get Jackie Bradley Jr. started. Now misses high with a fastball, one and one. Got enough on it to get swings up in the zone, swings and misses up in the zone. 92, top of the zone. It's not 98, it's not 99, it's 92, but it's in a good spot. And it's sequenced properly. Wants another one upstairs. Too high. I mean, there's a fine line. You got to throw it where it looks hittable, then you're going to get those pitchers to chase. And now he's got him thinking about balls up in the zone. Good time to cut the ball, throw a curve ball, something down in the zone. And here comes the curve, and you can see Jansen motioning down to the dirt. One of the pitch down, Thornton threw it, but down and in, and Bradley wouldn't chase. I'd throw another curveball right here. Give him another chance to throw that curveball. They're going to go to fastball on three and two. Belted foul down the line. Yeah, I think Jackie Bradley Jr. is in a swing situation right now. So, what you have to do three and two, don't try to throw a wicked breaking ball that's going to bounce in the dirt. Just try to throw a nice breaking ball on a three two pitch, and you might get a swing and miss. Change up coming. Got him. Changing speeds, mixing pitches again, and another strikeout for Thornton. Yeah, good job by Danny Jansen. He went right to the changeup, and that'll be four strikeouts now for Trent Thornton. And he doesn't try to make this the best changeup he's ever thrown. It's a 3 2 pitch. All you got to do is get one in the zone, and it's going to be four, five, six miles an hour slower than your fastball, and it disrupts the timing of Jackie Bradley Jr. So, two down for Marco Hernandez, the number nine hitter, the first batter. That Thornton faced when he came into the game to start the third inning. Hernandez hit a sinking liner to center. Jonathan Davis came in and made the play. And Hernandez taking all the way as Thornton drops in a very slow curveball at 71 for a strike. This is the best delivery I've seen from Trent Thornton for a long time. He's really patient with his pitches and very, very much under control. And as a result, he's filling up the strike zone with quality pitches. Owen oh, to the count as the Blue Jays go into more of a shift now on Hernandez. Bichette moving to the other side of the bag, and a Guerrero moving to, in effect, the shortstop spot. Got him. Wow. Trent Thornton has got it going tonight. Three hitless innings so far for Thornton. And the Blue Jays will take a lead to the bottom of the fifth. Rivera sets and deals. Strike three. Ball game over. Yankees win. The greatest closure in history now has the most saves in history. 2-0 pitch. Swinging. There it is. Here comes Austin. The score is tied. Mid went to make it a double. He didn't get the trademark, but he did get 3,000 hits. That fly ball out in the center. Way out of here. No oh, boggle. My goodness. Now a 3 1 for Acuna. Swinging a high fly ball. Seattle Mariners, Felix Hernandez, the 2-2. He got him! It's finally happened! A perfect game by a Seattle Mariner! It was done by the King! Deep to left field. This ball's high. It's deep. Number 600 for Jim Tony. Welcome to the 600 Club. Very nice, Jim Tony. Baseball tomorrow on Sportsnet. The Yankees are in Detroit. We will have game one of what is now a single admission doubleheader. 
from Comerica. The Yankees and Tigers getting rained out tonight, so that complicates things a little bit for the Yankees, you would think, before they come to Toronto. They've now got to play two games in Detroit. We'll get in here a little bit later, may change their pitching plans over the weekend a little bit. The Yankees and Astros in quite a battle for the best record in the American League. Both are 95 and 51. Entering play tonight, Yankees rained out. Oakland and Houston scoreless in the second. Brandon Drury sends a fly ball to right field and right at the edge of the warning track. Brock Holt is there to haul it in one down. Then on August 4th, the New York Yankees were 31 home runs behind the Minnesota Twins. Now they are tied. The Yankees have come on like gangbusters and you know last night they had six home runs and they didn't have Judge, they didn't have LeMayu and no Void and no Stanton of course. But the Yankees have hit 276 home runs. The Tigers, who they're playing that doubleheader, have hit 134. Wow. <laughs> and whoever hits the most home runs, that's a fair ball, and it hits the umpire. Stu Sherwater bounces out to the shortstop. And Xander Bogarts, that'll be a base hit for Danny Jansen. And now they're booing the umpire and he's Canadian folks give him a break but they're booing Sherwater because if he can get out of the way that's probably a double for Jansen. Absolutely. And because it's behind the infielders it's a in play situation that ball hits on the foul line and hits the umpire and Sherwater made the right call. He calls it fair kicks up the chalk on the dirt and Sherwater can't get out of the way of it. And you're right that would have been a double. Right down the line, and there's the chalk you can see, and then Sherwater wow. gets hit in the leg. I'll tell you, that was a heck of an effort, just keeping his feet and making the the fair call as quickly as he did. You can't ask a lot more out of him. That ball's coming at him fast. I mean, booing a guy when he gets hit by a ball hit that hard, you talk about adding insult to injury. But they don't know he's Canadian. Yeah. He's going to get it from a lot of his pals yeah. out west, though. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people in Saskatchewan texting him right now. Bichette with a soft liner that drops into left field for a base hit. Chance up to second. Well, Ryan Weber pitched a lot against the Buffalo Bisons, and he said that Bo Bichette always had his problems, and Bo acknowledged that too. He's one of those guys that doesn't throw hard, but this time Bichette wins that head to head battle against Ryan Weber. Weber made three starts against the Bisons. Bo always had his problems because Weber's one of those guys that goes back and forth, changes speeds, not overpowering, little sink on his fastball, but this time he gets a base hit. Blue Jays now out hitting the Red Sox six to one and leading two to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth for Kevin Abigio. And there's a base hit into right field. Jansen had to wait to make sure it got through, and as a result, will be held at third, and the bases are loaded. And here comes Dana Levanchi, the pitching coach for the Red Sox. Funny game. Vigio credited with a double on a pop up that Devers kind of overran down the left field line. And now smokes the ball into right field for a base hit. Now Lorenzi is out to have a chat with Ryan Weber looking at his scatter report as the bullpen Brian Johnson getting loose. Johnson pitched in the game last night just a third of an inning gave up a hit and had a walk. Weber made a start against the Buffalo Bisons on April 8th. And Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, Reese McGuire were all in the lineup, so they know what they're dealing with. And Bichette and Biggio both have hits in this inning against Ryan Weber. And what a great opportunity here for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. A pop up and a sack fly tonight. And he's up there with the bases loaded and one out. Trying to break it open here in the fifth. Base hit in the left field. Jansen in to score. Bichette getting the wave. The throw is not in time. And both other runners will advance. It's second and third, and it's 4 nothing Blue Jays. Guerrero picks up. 
his third, second and third RBI of the night. Danny Jansen scores the first run right behind him. Bo Bichette scores from second, and Guerrero pulls that breaking ball right through the hole at shortstop. Jansen comes in from third, right behind him. Bo Bichette slides in from second, and that's going to be it for Ryan Weber. The parade to and from the bullpen continues here, but the Blue Jays now leading by four. Pitch on the way. Bodie drives one in the air. Deep center field. Back goes Taylor. It's got a chance. It's a grand slam. A grand slam for David Bodie. And the Cubs have won the ball game. The fans are on their feet. Now the only man in between Paxton and the history books. A former American League MVP. Josh Donaldson. To Seager. The pick. The throw. Paxton has done it. It's a no-hit. In the air to deep left field for Tatis Jr. His first home run in the majors is a two-run blast. There's contact, and then there's that. Boxing flies one in the air to left center. Back in the wall, and it's gone! It's over! A walk-off home run to win game three. Two on, two out. Ten back. Johnson faced the Blue Jays last night, faced three batters, gave up a base hit to Reese McGuire. Jonathan Davis with a sacrifice and then a walk to uh, a pinch hitter in Teoscar Hernandez. That was the end of the night for Johnson. He will face a hot hitter and a guy who seems to hit everybody in a Red Sox uniform this year, Roddy Telez. Telez hit a home run off a left hander last night in the ballgame, a two run shot he hit off Josh Taylor. And home run was in the fifth inning. That was the difference in the ball game at the time. Red Sox had taken the lead. It was three to two at that point, but Rowdy had a two-run home run. That was the final score, four-three. Second and third, one out, infield in, and Telez pops it up right near the mound. The infielders will shoo Johnson out of the way, and it'll be Bogarts making the catch, two down. Yeah, Rowdy got a pretty good breaking ball to hit, and that's going to be it for Johnson. So he comes in and retires the only man he's assigned. And Ogrichik is the batter. We'll have another pitching change, Dan. Two pitches thrown by Johnson, and his night is done. Travis Lakins, you're up next. Here's the pitch. Swing and a hard hit ball inside third base hit down the left field line. Mazzara gets the third. Adrian going to second. He's got a double for 3,000. 9.49 now in Atlanta. 6.49 in Arizona. And a 2 2 to Perez. Swing and a miss. And Randy Johnson has thrown a perfect game. He's just keeping the ball away from board the whole game. He wants to get it. There ball. Behind the back slip and he got him. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Each row to right and deep. Back goes Parra and it's off the wall. 3,000 is in right field and each row is racing for third. And he's done it. The next pitcher, the fifth pitcher of the night already for the Red Sox, is right-hander Travis Lakins. Lakins is 25 years old. He was a six-round pick of the Red Sox in 2015 out of Ohio State. 
He's one of those guys, Dan, that's been called up five times this season. And he has been back and forth. He pitched against the Jays here on May 23rd after a Ryan Weber start. So he is following Ryan Weber this time in relief. The Blue Jays with four runs on eight hits in this game, leading four to nothing. Runners at second and third, two down for Randall Gritchick. Gritchick had a base hit his last time up, one for two, as he drives the ball to deep right field. Holt's going back, it's over his head and off the wall. Two more runs will come in to score on a double by Gritchick, and it is six to nothing. Randall Gritchick focused on hitting the ball to right field throughout his entire BP this afternoon and he has done a great job both of his hits tonight have gone to right field he had a single in the fourth and here he drives this pitch off the top of the fence in right it'll drive home two more runs for Gritchick that gives him 66 on the season and it's a big four run inning for the Blue Jays here in the fifth Last night, the Blue Jays scored four runs. They all scored on home runs. Tonight, they have six. Only one has come on a home run. The other five on some other kind of hit or a sack fly by Guerrero. That is such an important point you make because the Blue Jays, they just can't rely on home runs all the time. You're not going to hit home runs every single game. You've got to be able to manufacture runs as they have this inning. Coming into this game, the Blue Jays had scored 340 of their 631 runs on home runs, which is 53.9%. That'd be the highest rate in Major League history. And they have the record 53.1% back in 2010. But you got to have more than just home runs. One and one, the count on Teoscar Hernandez. Good slider there over the outside corner one and two. The Red Sox nine games out of a playoff spot with 17 games to go. So basically the die has been cast and there they'd have to pass two teams to make the playoffs. It has been a disappointing year a year where Alex Cora kept saying it's OK we're going to get there I feel it and they had a little streak here a little streak there but never could really get on a sustained roll. And Tampa Bay, Oakland, and Cleveland look like it'll be two of those three who will be the wild cards this year. You will never get anybody associated with the Red Sox to admit it, but I think this all began in spring training. I just think they put too much emphasis on resting, saying, hey, we played late into the season. We don't want our guys to play a lot in spring training, and they just never got off to a good start, especially their starting pitchers. They didn't pitch much. The only guy that pitched much in spring training was Eduardo Rodriguez and he's got 17 wins. Hernandez with a high drive left field. And the beat goes on for the Blue Jays here in the fifth inning. It is eight to nothing. Second home run of the season ties his career high from a year ago. He had 22 last year. He's matched his career high. And as he finds out after he hits a home run, if you dish it out, you better be able to take it when you hit that home run and and the seeds come flying in the dugout. Here's Jonathan Davis. There's no question about Teoscar's power. And he's got big time power when he squares it up it goes a long way and he just hasn't been able to put together consistent at bats but he now has 22 home runs 55 RBIs and somebody tonight Buck is going to hit a home run into baseball that will establish a new all time major league record for most home runs in a season Tay Oscar just hit home run number six thousand one hundred and one. 
in baseball this year. That is five away from setting a new major league record. Yeah, at the start of play tonight, baseball needed 21 home runs to tie the record that was set in 2017. And obviously, we're going to hit many more home runs tonight. Teoscar now is also just two RBIs away from tying his career high in ribbies, 57. Well, I tell you, for a team that came into this series having lost seven in a row, you know, they eke out a win barely last night. They bring out the bats tonight, and, and this is a young team, even with all these young players. They're very aware of who they're playing, how good the teams are that they're playing Atlanta, Tampa Bay, the Yankees. Red Sox still a good team even though it doesn't look like they're going to the playoffs and they've been in a lot of games but they have not been able to win a lot of games in recent weeks. And there's strike three call to win the inning but so far so good here tonight a six run fifth and an eight nothing lead at the end of five including home run number twenty two on the season for Teoscar Hernandez. <laughs> Hit for Christian Yelich. Deep down the right field line and gone! And Yelich comes through again. It's a cycle for Christian Yelich. Oh, looking for his first hit of the year. Oh. He drives one! Deep left field! That goes up to Back near the wall! It's out of here! <laughs> Bartolo has done it! The impossible has happened! Side the move, he's not going to get it. And it rolls off the side wall, and they're going to wave home Kendrick. The throw to the plate is there. Oh my and goodness. they got it. Are you kidding me? Wow. No hit innings for Trent Thornton, and he's really leaned on Clay Buckholz as a mentor for him this season. Buckholz said things are different. When he was coming up, he would follow veterans around, see what they did, how they did it, and he just tried to mirror that. Nowadays, the young guys are leaning on analytics and video, but Buckholz says what he wants to help Thornton improve with is the mental side of the game. He said being mentally strong will always bail you out when your stuff isn't working. He told Thornton you have to know how to deal with failure because it's how you come back from failure that will help you succeed in this game. Dan no such failing tonight. <laughs> Thornton doing quite well for himself. Yeah three terrific innings. Thank you Hazel and Clay Buckholz is a really interesting guy just to sit down and talk to. He's very introspective and a very thoughtful and you know he doesn't just throw out cliche answers. He loves to talk pitching and loves he, he's perfectly willing to talk about the lows that he's had and not just the highs that he's had and again with all the young pitchers in there to have a shoemaker in the clubhouse this time of year to have a buck holds back with the team this time of year Clayton Richard is back uh, and in the clubhouse with the Blue Jays you know and hopefully passing on some lessons that the young guys can take into their futures. Clay Buckholz came up as a 22 year old in 2007 and he was surrounded by some terrific pitchers. Dice came at Suzaka, Josh Beckett, Kurt Schilling, John Lester, Tim Wakefield, a lot of really good major league pitchers. And he said early on, I had a lot of success. He threw a no hitter in his second game. And he'll tell you, I got a little full of myself. And then I had to take a step back and then really kind of understood what those guys were telling me and to be around the Schilling and and Josh Beckett and those guys. And then he would have some terrific seasons in 2000 and 10 he was a 17 game winner and an all star. Clay's been a two time all star. He had another phenomenal season in 2013 when he was 12 and 1 with a 174 in run average. So now he understands that he can add a lot to these young guys career and prevent a lot of heartaches and maybe give them some shortcuts to success. Fastball in on the hands of Brock Holt jams him. Drury over for a look but won't have a play. Brandon played that perfectly because he got to that wall quickly and then he was able to get there and lean in just in case he had an opportunity to reach into the seats. A lot of times first baseman especially guys that 
move around the diamond don't play first base on a regular basis will drift to that wall and never get themselves in position. He's used that breaking ball that down on the dirt two strike breaking ball very effectively tonight but Holt wouldn't chase. You know Clay Buckholtz back to him for a second he's on the mound tomorrow night in the last game of this series Clay's now 35 years of age and. You know if he can finish off September healthy feel good about himself I would think he might be interested in continuing to pitch beyond this year. Last year he was very good with Arizona albeit in, in about a half of a season this year injuries interrupting his season as well but. You know if he stays healthy he still looks like he can go out there and he's not going to overpower people at this point but he can finesse his way through a lineup. Yeah I think when the Blue Jays signed Buck Holtz and they had Clayton Richard they kind of felt like we have two guys that might be able to give us a half a season each and they could patch together one spot in the rotation with two veterans and that really didn't play out. But you mentioned last year he was seven and two with a two of one earned run average in the National League mind you but he made 16 starts. Trent Thornton just raves about it, as Hazel mentioned about the opportunity he had to spend with Clay Buckles down in Florida when they put Thornton on the injured list. Again the three two to Brock Holt. And he golfs it to center field. Lots of room out there as Jonathan Davis now comes in and makes the play. This is another great example of a well placed fastball on a three two count. In a lopsided game where the hitter knows you're going to get a fastball, and he still got it in a good spot and got the pop up. This is the best we've seen Thornton in a couple of months. Yeah, no question about it. Xander Bogart's a ground out and a walk. The live virtual strike zone is brought to you by Rogers Ignite Wi Fi Hub, the power to control your Wi Fi connected devices. You know, it feels like the Red Sox, as we've discussed a little bit over the last couple of nights, are about to enter a transitional phase. They just fired their president, Dave Dombrowski. They might trade Mookie Betts in the offseason. J.D. Martinez might opt out of his contract. They've got some older pitchers who might not be what they used to be. And, and it feels like. The core of the team going forward may be Bogart's endeavors. You know, as great a guy as this guy is, and he is one of the best players in baseball, if they can't sign him to an extension this offseason, they may have to consider trading him. And then you look at what's left, and you know, Bogart's is in his prime. Devers may not even be in his prime yet, but they may become the, the focal points of this team going forward. Michael Chavis is another guy they have that's just 23 years old, and he's had quite a first season with 18 home runs and 58. He's right now he's on the injured list. Chavis has a shoulder problem, a sprained AC joint, but he's another guy. But you're right, it's it's a transition period. I mean, Dustin Pedroia appears to be over his career with knee problems and. It's going to be a tough transition. Christian Vasquez is 28 now. Mitch Moreland's 33. Brock Holtz 31. Yeah, Moreland's a pending free agent. Holtz a pending free agent. Porcello is a pending free agent. You wouldn't think he'd be back. J.D. Martinez can opt out of his deal, as you mentioned, and he has two opt outs, which is really interesting. But yeah, they've, they've got some tough decisions to make on how you're going to. Stay competitive. Weak ground ball out to second. Abigio will throw out Bogarts. Two down. Thornton has not given up a hit since he entered the game in the top of the third. He's recorded 11 outs and he's issued one walk. That is it. The Red Sox do have a hit. It was Devers with a base hit off Wilmer Font back in the first inning. And here's Devers now. There's the cutter and it misses inside ball one. You mentioned those numbers and that's impressive just standing alone. But when you consider how hard the Red Sox hit him before it's doubly impressive and he has just been so much under control. I mean, even when he's looking in for a sign you can see that he's relaxed and he's really kind of enjoying this outing tonight. And it's a good step for Trent Thornton. I think this 
outing no matter what happens from this point forward will go a long way as to far as saying Trent this is how you need to pitch this is what you need to do just this effort level right here is perfect. If he keeps taking the ball every five or six days he would have either two maybe more likely three more appearances before the end of the season. Up high three and one. After the Yankees come in this weekend the Blue Jays go out on their last road trip of the year they'll go to Baltimore and then go to the Bronx and then the last homestand is the Orioles and the Rays so the Blue Jays do have six games left against Baltimore we talked about you know these young players are enjoying you know to get a win over a good team means a lot to them as Devers lines a ball to left field and Oscar Hernandez will make the play. The side is retired in order again. How about four scoreless, hitless innings for Trent Thornton? As he has been dealing against the Red Sox tonight. Yelich knocks one to the gap in right center. This could be the one. He's going to be held to a double. He's trying for three. He's going to do it. is always live with MLB at bat. Follow the action with game tracking and video highlights along with up to the moment stats, standings, breaking news and more. Download MLB at bat today. It's your number one app for Toronto Blue Jays baseball. They're running out of time for Toronto Blue Jays baseball. The season is winding down. Next to last homestand for the Blue Jays and so far so good a win over the Red Sox last night a comfortable lead right now. And yet another pitcher coming in from the Boston bullpen. This is Hector Velasquez. Hector Velasquez has had an interesting season up and down. This is his 30th appearance. Velasquez is from Mexico. He signed as a free agent with the Red Sox in February of 2017. He was called back up on September 1st with the expanded rosters. Brandon Drury leads it off for the Blue Jays. Drury tonight has struck out and flied out. Eight runs on 10 hits for the Blue Jays tonight. Rowdy Telez is homered. Teoscar Hernandez is homered. Randall Gritchick's got two hits, two RBIs. Swing and a miss and a ball off the outside corner, two and one. After Drury, it'll be Danny Jansen who's on deck, and then you saw Bo Bichette getting ready for his fourth at bat of the night. Velasquez took a little bit off there, and it's fouled off by Drury, three and two.
And a bouncer foul past Louis Rivera, the third base coach down the line. Bobby Pointer started for the Red Sox, went a couple of innings, and it's been a, a procession of relievers ever since. And they got a ton of pitchers, September call ups, and so forth. There's a souvenir, there's a happy fan. I don't know how good a night you had, but I can tell you I had a better night because I got a ball at a baseball game. Absolutely. Yeah. Ball four to Drury. The Red Sox over their last eight series here in Toronto are eight no and they have won every series they have played in this ballpark over the last eight series and of course a win tonight and the Blue Jays would snap that streak. And they've always played well in this ballpark lately. Danny Jansen, the batter. Danny is one for two tonight. Had a base hit his last time up, but a ball he hit sharply down the left field line. It's another one in the left field. Boy, another hard line drive for Jansen. His second hit of the night. It's the confidence we get when we come together for our team. TD, proud fan and official bank of the Toronto Blue Jays. A new catcher is into the game this half inning as well for the Red Sox. Juan Centeno has taken over for Christian Vasquez. And Bo Bichette is up for the fourth time. Bo was one for three, single and scored last inning. When the Blue Jays broke it open with six runs in the bottom of the fifth. Long look in and finally a step off by Velasquez maybe thinking that Drury was relaying location or signs. Centeno and Velasquez are going to talk things over. I just don't think they're on the same page with the signs. The Centeno has just taken over. Centeno has had some time with the Houston Astros, and he and Cora were together with the Astros a couple of years ago. And he is in to take over for the starting catcher, Christian Vasquez. Rest of the night off for Vasquez. 8 nothing Blue Jays bottom six and they're at it again first and second nobody out. And look at those numbers taking advantage of their opportunities five for seven with runners in scoring position tonight. Eleven hits in the game overall. Down the right field line foul and out of play. Mentioned Centeno. He was part of the postseason roster for the Houston Astros in the World Series. He got into the division series, but did not play in the league championship series nor the World Series in 2018. That's a fair ball. Terrific play by Devers for one and two. A bit of a late call over at first by Chris Siegel. What a nice play by Devers. Yeah he had to change directions and got enough momentum he stepped on the bag and fired across the diamond in time according to the first base umpire but watch the momentum change going away has to stop come across the bag and fires the more than over at first. Blue Jays aren't going to challenge the play as Devers gathers steps on the bag for the force out and then completes the double play. Good stretch by more than at first. So runner at second two down after that play. Danny chance in the runner at second and the batter is Kevin and Biggio having a good night Biggio two for three with a single a double a stolen base and a couple of runs scored.
he just seems we talked about his walk percentage and we've talked about it all season. He just seems to recognize spin or pick up the location of a pitch so much more easily or, or a little bit earlier than other players and he he lays off pitches that look like they're going to be strikes but they're not. Yeah and he recognizes and we haven't seen too many wild swings where he's a boy he was really fooled on that we just haven't seen him fooled that often. And it's really interesting because he's basically a pull hitter and to be a pull hitter you got to make decisions quicker. If he were hitting the ball the opposite field of course you've got a split second longer to make a decision take or swing. But because he's a pull hitter he's got to really identify early if he's going to offer it a pitch. Takes right down the middle it's three and one. Remember when he first came up the reputation was he can get a line drive base hit over the shortstop. We saw it for a while but we haven't seen it lately. I think that's how he was able to stay in a pretty consistent area in the minors. But we haven't seen him hit that line drive sharply over the shortstop's head and that's why they're playing the infield the way they do now. So he just asked the umpire if that last ball was up just to get confirmation of what he thought but he felt it was close enough to offer at him. He's an interesting young player. Guerrero on deck if Biggio can get aboard. Good night for Vladdy tonight as well. This one is grounded foul up the right side. Marcus Simeon has hit a home run for Oakland. That is home run number 6,105 on the season that has tied the major league record. So, with two and a half weeks to go, whoever hits the next home run. It will establish a new record. Home run records dropping like flies here in 2019. Inside, and yet another walk for Biggio. Cameron had two walks in last night's game, along with a home run. He finished up that game one for three with two runs scored. He's been on base three of the four times he's come to the plate again tonight. And that's what you'd like to see at this point of the season, just the consistent at bats, and that's what we're getting from Biggio. Coming into the game, Buck, the top three guys who are the, the three rookies that everybody talks about, Bichette's on base percentage is was 343 at the beginning of the game. Biggio was 346. Guerrero was 348. And I think there's room for improvement on all three of those, but those are some pretty good numbers. They're all significantly better. Than the team average. This is not a good on base percentage team. Those three guys getting on base at the top of the order is unbelievably important to the offense of this game. Yeah, especially where they're hitting in the lineup, as you mentioned. When they get on base, the Blue Jays are going to score some runs. And of course, that does not include the bat of Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who's going to be a very important part of this team as well. But the Blue Jays, as a team, started play tonight with a 302 on base percentage. Guerrero now hitting 275 on the season. Big cut there as he fouls it back. Glad he is one for two. He's driven in three runs tonight. One on a sack fly in the fourth and two on a base hit in the fifth. Uh, another good pitch he got the hit. That breaking ball just sat up there in the middle of the hitting zone and said it hit me, but he fouled it straight back. One and one. Well, Jonathan Davis, you see him, you always see him talking to one of the guys that he likely spent a lot of time at Buffalo with this year. They are rooting for him, his teammates. As Guerrero, good take there. Two balls and a strike. They, they know he's a little bit older. They know he hasn't had many chances. Remember when he got his first hit earlier this season? How excited everybody was. There, there are guys rooting for him. Yeah, man. You know what? He, he comes in here. He wants to be a good teammate. Wants to do a lot of things to help his ball club, and he does it with defense. And now he'd like to be a little more consistent with the bat. The two-one. Fouled off two and two on Guerrero. And I just see where Jonathan Villar just hit a home run. 
in their game against the Dodgers. I'm not sure what home run number that is, but for VR, it's given the Orioles a 5 2 lead for VR. Individually, that's his 21st home run. That is the record. That's 6,106 on the season, all time single season record. I would think every team has probably set some sort of home run record or had a couple of its players, uh, you know, set some sort of a record. You, you just. Personal records, it's yeah, crazy. season it's, highs, yeah. and all those things. Consecutive games, I rookies, tell you one team most in a month. going to set a home run record, the Detroit Titans. Mm -hmm. That's been a long year for Ron Garden hiring company. Popped up by Guerrero near second base. Hernandez there. And the inning is over. Blue Jays will leave a couple of men on. Eight nothing at the end of six. Here's the pitch. Swing and a hard hit ball inside third base hit down the left field line. Mazzara gets the third. Adrian going to second. He's got a double for 3,000. 949 now in Atlanta. 649 in Arizona. And a 2 2 to Perez. Swing and a miss. And Randy Johnson has thrown a perfect game. Shell season is right around the corner. Don't miss some preseason action between the Flames and the Canucks. Monday night, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific on Sportsnet 1. Meanwhile, here at the ballpark, the Blue Jays enjoying an 8 0 lead in four outstanding hitless innings tonight from Trent Thornton. Yeah, and this is as well as he's thrown for a while, and I don't care about the score. I don't care about the situation. I like the way he's been under control. He's allowed just one walk. He's got five strikeouts. He's controlled all of his pitches and more than anything. He's controlled his delivery. He's been consistent in his tempo and his rhythm. And he's thrown a lot of quality pitches like that one. It's still the Boston Red Sox. It's still Bogart's endeavors and a Martinez. No bets tonight, but this is still a potent lineup that Thornton is facing. Wilmer Font, the opener, two innings, one hit. Trent Thornton coming on in the third, four scoreless. A little milling about, but nobody throwing in the Blue Jay bullpen right now. Mookie Betts getting the night off. Brock Holt getting the start in right field for the Red Sox. Catches the corner one and two. When a catcher is handling a pitcher the way that Trent Thornton is throwing tonight, it's really a lot of fun because Danny Jansen understands that Thornton has thrown all of his pitches for strikes, so you can really mix and match. It's not like you have to search for a pitch he can throw over. He's been really in charge with all of his pitches, and the results have been six strikeouts now. How about that slider down and away to strike out J.D. Martinez for the second time tonight. I mean he located his fastball very well in this at bat and then he finishes it off with a wicked breaking ball and Martinez chases it down and away and J.D.'s over three with a couple of strikeouts. Thornton has punched him out twice in this ballgame. So one down and here's Mitch Moreland who has struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. No 
A roller out to Biggio. Worked on that throw for a long time before the game today, and it's coming in handy. He's been making a lot of those the last couple of nights. Yeah, he sure has. And, and to a man, this young infield has worked hard here in the second half of the season. And it's kind of a competition. They come out and they all take ground balls together and they all work very hard. And it's an up tempo, upbeat kind of workout. And I think, too, it's a subtle mix of fielding drills and conditioning at the same time because it is rapid fire. A change up in for a strike to Andrew Benintendi. There's the guy in charge of the infielders. He's done a terrific job with this young infield. Doing a great job of getting him out here, addressing certain issues whenever they pop up. You know, at the start of the season, I think the big question was who are the players that we're going to count on going forward? And will those players improve as the season goes along? And I think certainly with Michette, Vigio, and Guriel and Guerrero, they've all improved. And you could say, and I don't think anybody would disagree, that those are the core guys that are going to go forward with this team. And they have improved. They've improved defensively. They've improved at the plate. And they are growing in the major leaguers. Another strikeout. Five hitless innings for Trent Thornton tonight with seven strikeouts. Frustration for the Red Sox. And what an outing by Trent Thornton has been as sharp as he has been all season. And the pitch on the way. Bodie drives one in the air. Deep center field. Back goes Tanner. It's got a chance. It's a grand slam. A grand slam for David Bodie. And the Cubs have won the ball game. The fans are on their feet. Now the only man in between Paxton and the history books, a former American League MVP, Josh Donaldson. To Seager, the pick, the throw, Paxton has done it! It's a no-hitter! That fly ball out in the center. Way out of here. Oh, Margo, my goodness. Two home runs tonight. I'd like to see a hat trick. I don't know about you. Goldschmidt, high drive, out to left. You bet he's done it. Three home runs. Velez with a home run in his second consecutive game. They need, really needed that home run last night in a 4 to 3 win. It's 8 nothing tonight, but good to see Telez swinging a good bat as well. The rookies have been heavily involved in the success that the Blue Jays have had tonight. And at the end of the year, if they lose 97, 99, 101, I don't know that it makes that much of a difference. But just to see them having some fun, building some confidence, that can carry over into next year. No question about it, Dan. And Rowdy's home run was his 19th of the season. It was his seventh home run of the year against the Boston Red Sox, and that ties a rookie record. Uh, most home runs in a single season by a rookie against Boston. Ron Kittle also hit seven home runs in 1983 against the Red Sox. And Rowdy Telez has a couple more games to set that record by himself. With a new pitcher coming in for the Red Sox here in the bottom of the seventh, the right hander Mike Showarren. Showarren, 10 games prior to this one tonight. And we got Sam Travis in at first base for the Red Sox as well. As Alex Cora starting to empty his bench a little bit. Eight nothing bottom seven. Shawarn pitched against the Blue Jays on the 22nd of June in an 8 7 loss. And he gave up back to back home runs to Freddie Galvis and Rowdy Telez.
Biggio had a single and Galvis hit a two run home run. And then right after that, Browdy Telez hit a home run. Joe Warren's out of the University of Maryland, a fifth round draft pick in 2016. After Telez, scheduled to Randall Gritchick and Teoscar Hernandez. Eight runs and 11 hits, one error for the Blue Jays. No runs, one hit, and one error for the Red Sox. An error was, after the fact, assessed to the right field of Brock Holt on that throw home that bounced up and hit uh, Christian Vasquez, allowing a runner to advance to second on the play. Swing and a miss at a ball up and out of the zone. Telez strikes out one down. That high fastball from Sharon does the trick on Telez. Rowdy strikes out for a second time, but now he's got 19 home runs, just one shy of becoming another 20 home run hitter in the big leagues. Brandon Gritchick's had a good night, Dan. Single, double, two for three, couple of RBIs. Both of his hits, as you mentioned last time up, have gone to the opposite field for Randall tonight. Well, there are so many hits in that direction, especially with all these shifts. If hitters can make the adjustment, and I really don't see why they can't. We talked about it earlier. Fly ball to left field, playable, and a Ben Intendi is there. Gritchick retired, two down. Drive of the game brought to you by Honda, driving Canada home for 50 years. Back in the fifth inning with a man at second base, Teoscar Hernandez connects against Travis Lakehead and it's a two run home run. It's a milestone home run as it gives Teoscar 22 for the season that ties his career high, except last year. And it gives him a sunflower seed bath in the dugout. Oscar over his last 47 games has an OPS right around 900 and for people not all that familiar with OPS on base plus slugging 900 is really good very good <laughs> and that's a 47 game stretch now that's even with kind of that ugly stretch that he had for the last several days before tonight we have seen this for his time with Toronto he can get really hot and then he can really struggle if he could ever put together that consistent sustained Success. He could put up huge numbers, but again, like a Rowdy Telez, there are highs and lows and peaks and valleys. Little chopper. That is a fair ball, and the catcher Centeno will throw out Tay Oscar to end the inning as the Blue Jays go in order. Eight nothing Jays at the end of seven. Center receive a Blue Jays zombie giveaway. Zombie night will be a family friendly event at the ballpark. 
Fans are encouraged to visit the 200 level WestJet flight deck for zombie themed activities and photo opportunities. Get your tickets at BlueJays.com slash promotions. Can you elaborate on zombie themed activities? Uh, yeah, I would <laughs> like to talk a little bit about that. It's Friday the 13th after all, Dan. <laughs> We'd better be on our we'd better be on guard that night. We'd wow. better watch our backs then. You night, think? So, yeah. Jason Adam comes on here in the eighth inning. A tip of the cap to Trent Thornton. Five outstanding innings tonight. One walk, seven strikeouts, did not allow a hit in his effort. And now Jason Adam on for the top of the eighth. Anthony Alford taking over in center field. Excuse me, Alford is in right field. Davis stays in center as yes. Gritchick is out of the ball game. And Juan Centeno gets his first at bat of the night. The Red Sox with just one hit in the game, a first inning single by Rafael Devers. Adam with a fastball that's fouled back, and it's one and one. So don't know that Alford will get an at bat in this game. The Blue Jays would have to have a very productive bottom of the eighth inning for him to get a chance to swing the bat. He does get in uh, for an inning or two of defense here. Has not been playing a ton. And again, there's a glut of outfielders right now. Grichik and Hernandez have been playing most of the time. And they're getting a pretty good look at Jonathan Davis, but Alford hasn't played that much. Billy McKinney hasn't played that much. Fisher's been playing here and there. And again, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. could be back within the next few days. Yeah, it's interesting, and it's very difficult to have guys come up in September and then ask them to perform after sitting for a while. Popped up, and Guerrero coming a long way because he was in the shift. Adam looked up, looked at Vladdy, looked up again, and there was this unspoken, do you want me to get that, or are you going to get that? And Guerrero was able to get there in time. Yeah, Centeno pops out, and that was a long run, and you described it perfectly because the pitcher took a look at seeing where Guerrero was starting from and then took a couple of steps to get in position. <laughs> yeah, like I'll get it if you want me to get it, but I'm really not supposed to get it. Yeah, watch the pitcher <laughs> after the pop up. He's going to look up. There it is right there. And he looks at Vladdy and says, oh, you want me to help? No, nope. Vladdy says, I got it. Plenty of time. No problem. Let the sure man have it, Ash. Jason. You know, Dan, there's an interesting streak on the line of this game. You mentioned one hit for Boston, and it's a single. The Red Sox have a streak of 159 consecutive games with an extra base hit. That's the fourth such longest streak in baseball history. Baseball history in the modern era, which starts in 1900. 159 straight games with an extra base hit. The base hit by Devers, remember, wasn't hit that hard. That was the one that Hernandez came in and then, and rightly so, I think, had to play up and make sure it didn't bounce over his head. It was. It wasn't hit that hard that base hit by Devers there was a reasonably hard hit ball off the bat of Marco Hernandez that Jonathan Davis made a nice play on in center field. Other than that it's been strikeouts and soft contact. There's the streak we were talking about consecutive games with an extra base hit the Red Sox have the all time record but that was back in 04 and 05 and then Reds in 99 161 tied with the Indians in 95 96 and then the Red Sox. 159 games with an extra base hit. I mean, that just speaks to the type of offense they have. But tonight, it's been a different story. Blue Jays pitchers have really shut them down. The Devers base hit the single came in the first inning with two outs. Two down for Marco Hernandez, who has lined out and struck out. Jays and Red Sox will wrap up this series tomorrow night. We mentioned to Clay Buckholtz will get the start for the Blue Jays, and we are expecting Yoli Chassin to start for Boston. Although, again, sometimes you don't hear about openers till a couple of hours before game time. Things can change.
Fly ball right center field. All for the back. Has room. And the side is retired. Three up, three down against Jason Adam. Eight nothing. Blue Jays going to bottom eight. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here are Jamie Campbell and Cliff Floyd in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. 2 0 pitch. Swinging. There it is. Here comes Osmond. The star in time. Mid went to make it a double. He didn't get the trademark, but he did get 3,000 hits. And he swings and drives one left center field deep. Hernandez back at the wall. Goodbye. Home run, Steve Pierce. High fly ball in the left. Back at the wall. He's got another. How about Steve Pierce? Yelich knocks one to the gap in right center. This could be the one. He's going to be held to a double. He's trying for a three. He's going to do it. Get out. 3-1 for Acuna. Swinging a high fly ball. Deep to left field. Way, way back. It's gone. The grandest of all home runs. 9-49 now in Atlanta. 6-49 in Arizona. And a 2-2 to Perez. Swing and a miss. And Randy Johnson has thrown a perfect game. Sale winds, he fires. Swing and a miss, strike three, it's over. The Red Sox have won the World Championship. They win the World Series. Four games to one. Can you believe it? Each to win a ball game last night, and tonight they have really broken out. They have scored eight runs on the night. They got 11 hits and hit a couple of homers. They ask Hernandez with one of them, Rowdy Telez with the other. Nice night for Randall Gritchick and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Kevin Abigio, among others. And it's been a one sided affair in favor of the Blue Jays. And boy, the Red Sox have just hit a wall, lost their last three to the Yankees. After the Sunday night game, fired their president, Dave Dombrowski. They've come in and lost last night on the verge of losing again tonight. Here's Jonathan Davis. With Shawarin to back out there for his second inning of work. Davis tonight 0 for 3, a fly ball, a ground out, and a strikeout. Brandon Drury's on deck, then Danny Jansen. You know, Jonathan Davis, you mentioned what he's done at the plate tonight. He may have had a very subtle impact in Trent Thornton's outing tonight. Because Thornton came into the game, the first batter he faced at a sinking line drive to center field, and Jonathan Davis made a nice running catch. And that set the tone for the outing in my mind, because if that ball gets down, Thornton's probably thinking, here we go again. It's the Red Sox. Now I got to deal with the top of the order. But that gave him the first out of the inning, and then he would go on and strike two more out in that inning and got him off to a terrific start tonight. It's fun when you win, isn't yep. it? They're kids. <laughs> He's 20. You were 20 when you broke into the big leagues, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, things weren't as relaxed as they are now. Yeah. Uh, you come up as a rookie then, you just stayed in the corner and you kept your mouth shut. And he came up with such fanfare. I mean, they anointed him a star before he even got here. And, you know, he's going to be a star. There's no question about that. But he's been around it and been exposed to it since the moment he signed. Swing and a miss by Davis. Ball in the dirt. Throw down to first. One down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. And it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. A lot of smiling today for the home side. It started with a picture day out of the field at about 3.30 this afternoon. And it has continued throughout the evening with the way they have swung the bats and the pitching they have gotten. Brandon Drury 0 for 2 with a walk tonight.
Brian Tapera will work the ninth inning. You know, almost a forgotten guy because of the injury and how long he's been out. And not that we forget, but had a couple of pretty good years for this team. Oh, he sure did. And, and he's a big part of their bullpen. Yeah. Threw a lot of innings. He was consistent. It took him a long time to get his self established in the big leagues, but boy, the last couple of years he's been a terrific part of this bullpen. Yeah. And if you can pencil him back in as a piece for next year, if he's healthy and and in the plans bullpens are, are the most you know they change more from year to year than any other part of a team and every general manager will tell you that very fluid yeah from year to that year. was the word I was looking for thank you <laughs> and you know who knows if Ken Giles is going to be back and Jordan Romano figures to be a part of it Tim Mesa appears to be a part of it. You know Wilmer Fonts come in and. Although he's been up and down and around the big leagues for a long time, he's not even at arbitration yet. I mean, he's a, a guy without a lot of major league time, whether it's as an opener or a middle guy or whatever. You, I mean, I think there's a really good chance Wilmer Fonts back with this yeah, team. Yeah, I agree team. with that 100%. And I think Pete Walker deserves an awful lot of credit because he's cleaned up some things in Fonts' delivery. He was tipping his pitches. Pete did a nice job and got him into a good spot where he's throwing a splitter more. I think Vaughn becomes an important guy going into spring training as far as how they're going to put their bullpen together. Danny Jansen comes up. Danny's had a good night. Two for three with a couple of base hits and a run scored. Both balls hit hard, both balls pulled. It's another one sharply but right at the shortstop and that'll be a Taylor made 6 4 3 inning ending double play to the ninth with the Blue Jays up eight to nothing. The fans are on their feet. Now the only man in between Paxton and the history books a former American League MVP Josh Donaldson to Seager the pick the throw Paxton has done it. It's a no hit. That is 50 cents. Curtis Jackson. Curtis Jackson. And his first pitch was not great. Just a bit outside. That was Curtis Jackson. I don't even like when he comes around here. You know, I don't even want him around here. 50 cents is the best. Here's the pinch. Swing and a hard hit ball inside third base hit down the left field line. Mazzara gets the third. Adrian going to second. He's got a double for 3,000. Monumental comeback by the Red Sox here for the ninth inning. It'll be the Blue Jays going for the sweep tomorrow night. Blue Jays Central comes your way at 6.30 Eastern time. First pitch just after 7 o'clock. Clay Buckholz will be on the mound for the Jays tomorrow night. Ninth inning, and here is the guy we were talking about and showing you when he was warming up in the bullpen. Here's Ryan Tapera. Ryan Tapera had surgery to remove some loose bodies from his elbow, a little bit of a spur in there, and also shaved down. Tried to pitch through it, but just couldn't straighten out his elbow and had to succumb to the surgery, but he feels good now. Velocity is building back up, and I think it's one thing where. He's going to get better and better with the more innings but it's nice at least that he has a chance to close the book on this season healthy and pitching. Yeah, it can go into the offseason with some peace of mind. Ninth inning eight nothing Blue Jays out hitting the Red Sox eleven to one the only hit for the for Boston way back in the first inning. Top of the order Brock Holt who's 0 for 3. 
Well, we can. Trent Thornton. One more note on Thornton. It was just outstanding tonight. Five no hit innings in relief. Trent Thornton ties a franchise record tonight for the longest no hit stint in relief with Roy Lee Jackson. As Holt hits a fly ball deep down the right field line, but a foul. Roy Lee Jackson spent four years with the Blue Jays in the early 1980s. And on September the 28th, 1982, went five perfect innings in relief in game two of a doubleheader against Minnesota. In game one of that doubleheader, Jim Clancy took a perfect game into the ninth inning. Randy Bush? Randy Bush. That was quite a day for the Blue Jays wow. pitchers. Which game did you catch? First one. Clancy take you out for dinner? No. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was one of the best games I was ever involved in. Clancy was tremendous, and let me see what the time was. It's a tr ridiculous time. The time of game: one thirty-three. One thirty-three. Nine innings. <laughs> one thirty-three. I caught a hell of a game that day, Dan. You didn't break. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't break a sweat. <laughs> wow. That I game, Randy Bush broke his bat. Uh, Clancy. Jim was terrific a great pitcher and uh, in that game Randy Bush broke his bat got a single over Damo's head next ball is a ground ball double play off the bat of Ron Washington and then we got another out but Clancy was unbelievable just a tremendous effort. And that was the game that he took a perfect game into the ninth inning. We won three to one. Some pretty good hitters on that Minnesota team back in the well, early days. Good, good hitter. That was a, a good game, a good lineup. And and when you look at the lineup for Minnesota, Bobby Mitchell, John Castino, Tom Bernanski, Ken Herbeck, Gary Ward, Gary Gaetti, Randy Bush, Ron Washington was the shortstop. Base hit for Brock Holt. Here's Chris Owings, who came on defensively in the bottom of the eighth for Xander Bogarts. Late on that fastball, it's 0 1. Were you nervous going back out to the field in the ninth inning, knowing that Clancy was throwing a perfect game? No, I wasn't nervous at all. I just felt like he was going to throw a perfect game. And it was a broken bat little blooper that Dama got turned around on. Dama Garcia was our second baseman and a very good one. But he got turned around and kind of turned one way and then turned the other way and couldn't get back in time to make a catch. But I thought for sure that he was going to throw a, a perfect game in that game. He was phenomenal. Sharply hit to third. Guerrero from his knees to second on the first in time. The Blue Jays now an out away and with a preview of Sportsnet Central here are Brendan and Ivanka. <laughs> yeah saw that don't want to give it away but. I saw that an interesting moment. I'm sure it was a great interview with Bianca. The Red Sox are going to review this. They're going to challenge the play at first base to see whether or not Owings was safely across. How about this? You've talked about the arm strength of Vladdy a lot. That's not an easy play. He's got a tremendous arm and from his knees and well, it looks like he may have beaten that play. That's why the Red Sox are going to challenge it. And you look at the foot on the base. It comes down before the ball hits the glove at first base so I'm sure they're going to overturn this but Vladdy like we said he has worked hard with the other two infielders he is there with and they have absolutely done a great job of getting better especially defensively and there's the call from Jeff Nelson the crew chief safe so the double play is overturned. Terrific play by Vladdy backhanding it on the short up throws from his knees to Vizio and the throw is a little bit late at first. So the call is overturned. It's a fielder's choice for Owings one on one out here for the ninth inning and the batter was Rafael Devers one for three. Now remember the Red Sox have that long streak 
at stake 159 straight games with an extra base hit. Devers has one of the two hits tonight for Boston. Shift on for the Blue Jays with three on the right side against the left hand hitting Devers. He'll take a strike and it's one and one. The win will go to Trent Thornton tonight. Five innings in relief. Wilmer Fawn to work the first two as the opener. Jason Adam the eighth and out to Para on in the ninth. And the offense really spread around nicely between a number of different hitters. I think Rafael Devers talks to himself, whether it's out loud or in his head, more than any other hitter in baseball between pitches. Yeah, man, you know what? <laughs> other people should start talking to themselves as well. <laughs> And whatever he's doing is working. Man, he's had a phenomenal season. He has just really blossomed into one of the better players in the game, one of the better hitters for sure. He's got 183 hits now. He leads the majors in extra base hits. And he's 22. You look at him, obviously, Bichette and Guerrero, we talk about a lot here. Acuna and Albies in Atlanta, Tatis. In San Diego, Soto in Washington, so many good young players. Robles in Washington, and they just got so many good players all around baseball. Baseball's in a pretty good spot right now for young budding stars. In the All Star games in the next couple of years, there's going to be a lot of new faces in the All Star games. Full count on Devers. There's that to pair a cutter or slider inside. Endeavors all he could do was fight it off foul. Devers hit his 50th double last night, and he is the ninth. He's the eighth different player to have 50 doubles in franchise history. It's been done nine times. But at 22 years old, he's the franchise youngest player to reach the 50 doubles mark for a season. Three two again. Nice stop by Drury and look at him go for the lead runner and they almost turn what would have been an incredible game ending double play. Wow. What a play by Drury. That's a tremendous play and we have mentioned that Drury has started at six different positions in the field and the infielders want the Blue Jays to look at it to get this double play. But look at the athletic play by Drury. First of all, it's a bid for an extra base hit, and from his seat, he throws to set Guerrero, return throw to Tapera. And an athletic play by Brendan Drury. I mean, he's on the seat of his pants, and look at the throw from Guerrero. It's bang, bang at first, and Devers legs it out to keep the game alive as he is on the base before the ball hits Tapera's mitt. So the Blue Jays now an out away. And Alex Cora is going to make a change. Gorky Hernandez is going to come in to run for Devers. I guess why risk the meal ticket with two down in the ninth inning. The batter J.D. Martinez, 8 0, ninth inning. Blue Jays looking to make it two in a row over the Red Sox, and there's a breaking ball for a strike. For Tapera, his fourth appearance since being activated.
Ground ball to short. Charging Bichette. Flip to Biggio, and that's your ball game. A convincing win for the Blue Jays. Got a good work at the plate, good work on the mound, good work in the field. A nice victory for the Blue Jays as they beat the Red Sox 8 to nothing. And it snaps a streak of eight straight series wins for Boston here at Rogers Center. And they shut out a very good hitter.